Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Will Kane in for Ryan today. He'll be back with us next Tuesday. You can follow me on the oneanderflowers.com Twitter feed at Will Kane, W-I-L-L-C-A-I-N. I don't know, 30 seconds before the show starts, I set a volleyball, because why wouldn't you be setting a volleyball, into the lights. It's just dust is raining down all over me right now. So before we get into Matthew Stafford and how he is possibly now, not possibly, definitely, the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, we got to address a little inter, you know intra-show problem, and that is how one of our main producers, Steve, Mr. Steven Cerruti, has managed to land himself a position on the Fun Committee at ESPN. The Fun Committee. And excused yourself from the company picnic outing last night, which basically Rice Moment turned into, I mean, at least a small portion of the Rosillo Show family all going out, having a few bears, riding some roller coasters, just all, smiles all around. When you say small uh, portion, it was you and Michelle, correct? <laughs> there was some, just two people. There was a few other people around. Okay, okay. noted. Yeah. Uh, what fun did I miss? Well, we rode roller coasters. Two scary ones, to be exact. It was fun. That was a good roller coaster. They were both very good. Very scary. Here, I have a quiz. For, since, since you were too good for the show yesterday, Saruti, let me ask you a question. Michelle Smallman, Will Kane, and Jeff Darlington walk up to the beer tent at the Lake Compounds ESPN picnic. Three beers are ordered. One Coors Light, one Miller Light, and one Blue Moon. Assign the beer to the order. Well, okay, Miller Light is a big, the big no. Uh, man, I, I thought I liked Jeff. Okay, I'm gonna say the Blue Moon was you. I'm gonna say the Miller Light only because I don't know him as Jeff Darlington because I don't think Michelle would drink Miller Light. And what was the third one, Coors? Coors Light. But you wouldn't drink Coors Light either. You're off, and I want to know why you assigned me Blue Moon. I just feel like Blue Moon's kind of cool, and you know, I think you know, you put out the cool vibe, whether or not you are or not. I don't <laughs> That's know, the whole but... point. That's the point of the Blue Moon to put out the cool vibe, and I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so, are you Miller? I'm the Miller Light oh, all the man, way. You man, you just dropped down so many points. No way, it, Miller Light among the mass-produced beers. Do you really think you're one of these people that could line up Miller Light, Coors Light, and Bud Light and knock them down? You could say yes with 100, percent you know, uh, 100 percent certainty. Yes. No. Yes. You couldn't. I know I could do it with Coors and Bud Light, and I know I, and I know I don't like Miller Light. So that's there's three right there. I'm going to tell you. I think I could put a Miller Light and Coors Light next to each other, blind taste test, and you couldn't guess which is which. Let's do it tomorrow. No, nope. you're back Thursday, right? Let's do it in five minutes. Okay, go figure it out. We got to run that one through uh, PR, I think first. <laughs> It's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Matthew Stafford, as I said, will become the highest paid player in NFL history with the new five-year deal he's agreed to with the Detroit Lions. Detroit or Detroit? Where do we go? Detroit or Detroit? It's Detroit, right? Detroit. So Detroit Lions. He will make $27 million annually, and his guarantees, according to Adam Schefter, go like this here. What is it? It is eighty-five million over three years. Ninety-two. Do I have this right? What is it? What? Eighty-two over eighty-five million over three years. Ninety-two over four. Ninety-two guaranteed. Ninety-two guaranteed. Just beat Andrew Luck, who was at eighty-seven million guaranteed. More guaranteed money than Andrew Luck, and this seems to make some people upset. This is somehow. I mean, even within our show, within the production meeting, how is Matthew Stafford the highest paid quarterback in the NFL? How does this make sense? This is, of course, Stephen A. Smith on first take, wondering aloud how this happens. I have a problem with the fact that the man has been a quarterback in the National Football League for eight years. He's made the playoffs three times. He's only had a winning record and a winning season three times. And this organization has not won a playoff game since 1991. There is just something about me that has a problem with individuals that end up cashing in when the team never seems to. I, it's not his fault, and I get that. And I'm not, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, my Lord, you know, he doesn't deserve the money. That's not what I'm saying. But when you are the $27 million man, the largest annual salary in NFL history, damn, could you win a playoff game? He has so many good, like, 
one-liners. He has so many good fallback jar. You know, I mean, there's just something about me that doesn't like it when an individual is the highest paid player when the team can't cash in. When an individual cash in, cashes in and a team can't cash in. It's a good line. But to use one of Stephen A's own lines against him, because he often says this, it just gives me cause to pause. Cause to pause is right up there with Bevy and Stephen A's favorite things to say. You know, this should give you cause to pause. What is your alternative to Matthew Stafford? You can point out, as Michelle Smallman did in our production meeting, no playoff victories. Not one. A record of 5-46 and 46 against teams with winning records. That's Matthew Stafford as the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. But I don't think the accurate thing, the accurate debate, the accurate, accurate measurement on whether or not Matthew Stafford should get this, this contract is whether or not he's the best quarterback in the NFL or how many playoff games he's won. How does he compare against Aaron Rodgers? I think that's not the analysis you need to be going through. The analysis you need to be going through is Matthew Stafford versus the wilderness. What does it look like if your franchise is in the wilderness? And, of course, by the wilderness, I mean do not have an answer at quarterback. Either don't have a franchise quarterback or don't have at least the prospect of a young guy who could become your franchise quarterback. And so when you measure your future against the wilderness, all of a sudden guys get very, very valuable. By most measures, Matthew Stafford is safely within, what are we going to call it, the prairie, the city, civilization. Matthew, if, if the wilderness is, we don't know what we have at quarterback. We're not sure if we can win with what we have at quarterback. The alternative is civilization. How many quarterbacks are inside of civilization? Well, you know, hey, we might have a future here. We can win with this guy. Because no matter how many num- what the numbers you come up with, I think Matthew Stafford is clearly within that line. What are you doing? You're analyzing my analogy? Civilization versus wilderness? You didn't like that one? No, I loved it. <laughs> I could see it on your face. We're going to start a new segment, by the way. We discussed it last night. Sarudi's negative opinion on everything. <laughs> what today has made you upset? Wasn't my idea. I can't say the one I want to today. The thing that's making you upset today? Yeah. Why? Is it me? It's not you, Will. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be about you, Will. It feels like it as you stare at me with that face on. Something about your face. <laughs> How many quarterbacks would you not pay top dollar to? That's the real question. 888 3776 Because I would suggest to you this. 16. There's at least 16 guys that if they came up in the free market right now, could get top dollar. The line of guys on the wilderness, the line between civilization and the wilderness, is probably 16 or 17 guys deep. The wilderness versus civilization line is drawn by names like Carson Wentz, Alex Smith, Andy Dalton. That's the line. That's where you start asking yourself, should we go all in on this guy? Should we give this guy everything it's going to take to keep him in-house? Matthew Stafford? Man, it's not even a close call. He's safely in the Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson, Eli Manning, Cam Newton, Derek Carr. Previously highest paid quarterback in the NFL range. He's safely within that range. The guy you got to pay. Because the wilderness is so scary. That's Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. Give me a call, 888-729-3776. How deep do you get? How deep do you get before you get to the wilderness? How many guys do you think you have to pay top dollar to? Because the alternative is so scary. scary. I think it's 16 to 17 guys. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Russillo on ESPN Radio. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. 
Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. One, two, three, four. I mean, there's so many names that you can say, I have to pay top dollar to this guy. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Brady, Rogers, Ryan, Breeze, Roethlisberger, Carr. Clearly, right? You tell me you're not giving Philip Rivers top dollar? You're not afraid of the alternatives if you let Philip Rivers go? Andrew Luck, Cam Newton, Russell Wilson. The Seahawks ready to say, you know what, Russell? Mm, it's too rich for our blood. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is going to get top dollar a year from now. Kirk Cousins who, look, what was Kirk? He was sixth in QBR this last year, but, I mean, ESPN just put out a top 100 list of NFL players according to 53 experts on ESPN.com. That's writers, analysts, former members of the NFL. And Kirk Cousins didn't make top 100. He didn't make a top 100 player in the NFL. And he's going to get paid all the way. Why? Because the alternative is so scary. I mean, even the young guys, Dak Prescott, Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston, they come up right now. You don't think their teams will go all in right now on paying them? I'm telling you, the names that you get to before you say, nope, can't make him the highest paid player in the NFL are names like Alex Smith. We've seen the Chiefs draft Patrick Mahomes. Okay, our future isn't tied to him. It's my point to you, Sarudius, it's 16 or 17 deep. That's how many guys can be high. Could, if the market and timing lined up, be the highest paid player in the NFL? I don't think I agree with you on like Mariota and some of those younger guys, though. I think it's too soon. Well, you, it may be too soon for you to say, oh, these are going to be one of the best players in the NFL. But think about all life is, is leverage and options. That's it. What is your option? What is your alternative? When people move on, you know, in, 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 it's, you think about all the guys who have a microphone in front of their face, be it ESPN or Fox News or CNN. Do you know what drives how much they get paid? No one sits there and goes, hmm, what, what do they get in ratings? What is that return in advertising dollars? I mean, they should, and to some extent they do, but what really drives the bottom line? Who's willing to pay X to get them out of here, right? And Marietta, Prescott, Winston, if those guys were free agents right now, somebody, if not their own team, is throwing big dollars at them despite the lack of body of evidence because the alternative is so bad. Having nothing is so bad and so scary. I'm not saying they are the best player in the NFL. I don't think Matthew Stafford's the best player in the NFL. But you know what I think about Matthew Stafford is he's safely in that zone of, yeah, we got to give everything to him. I mean, the New York Jets just announced that Josh McCown's going to be their starting quarterback because Christian Hackenberg turned out to be a big bag of nothing. I mean, that's not where you want to end up. And I, I think Josh McCown's great, but he's not who the great guy, love him when he come in here, but that's not, you can't build your franchise around that. You can build your franchise around Matt Stafford still. The Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll compare rates for you so you get the best deal, even if it's not with us. Saving you time and money, now that's progressive. Call or click today. Kenny in Indianapolis, you're on the Rosillo Show with Will Kane. Hey, I just wanted to give a quick take. I think if you think about a good comparison, it would be Jameis Winston. If Jameis Winston leaves the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because you're unwilling to sign him to the max deal, that franchise goes from upcoming to plummeting. Absolutely. I mean, but the thing is, that doesn't make Tampa unique. I don't think that makes Jameis unique. I'm telling you, half the league is in that position. Oh, I agree. I agree with you 100%. I think at least 20 people, excuse me, at least 20 quarterbacks are in that position where you need to pay them. Okay, don't out hot take me, Kenny. You out hot takes me with going to 20. It's clearly not more than 16 or 17. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I think it's 20. All right, I appreciate the call, Kenny. Here's this. We'll, let's just work off this for a second. Mike Sando was in here about a week ago, and he uh, what did he, he talked to NFL GMs, coaches, coordinators, and ranked NFL quarterbacks into tiers. Mike Sando on ESPN.com. And here, he, I'll, I'll try to do this quickly. Here's his quarterback tiers. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, and Matt Ryan all in tier one. Those guys are all breaking the bank if they, get, if they come up. Andrew Luck, Derek Carr, Matt Stafford, Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson, Eli Manning, Cam Newton, and Kirk Cousins in Tier 2. Kirk Cousins at the bottom of Tier 2. And we've already heard 
Guys like Adam Schefter saying, this is redefining the market. Guys like Kirk Cousins are going to get paid. Listen to this. This expands the quarterback market and makes it such that players like Drew Brees and Kirk Cousins, who are headed into the last year of their contract, are staring straight at the possibility of becoming $30 million a year kind of quarterbacks. And Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers, who are on the top of their game and don't have a long way to go in their deal, they're looking at also similar numbers. And I, I think the issue now is Matthew Stafford is a really good quarterback, but he's not the best quarterback in the game. And we're seeing the best quarterback in the game uh, be overshadowed by guys like Matthew Stafford. Here. So we saw this in the offensive line with Brandon Linder of Jacksonville, a guy that a lot of people don't even know, becomes the highest-paid center. Now you're seeing Matthew right. Stafford become the highest-paid quarterback. And when the highest-paid guy at that position is not the best player in the league at that position, it creates a little bit of a discrepancy. There you have it. Kirk Cousins will break the bank, be in the $30 million range a year from now. Kirk Cousins is the bottom of Mike Sando's Tier 2 quarterbacks, which puts him about 13th in the league. And I would suggest to you, you can dip into Tier 3 with guys who are showing promise. Dak Prescott, Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston. There's your first three. That gets you to 16. If they were on the market, fear and promise would drive their price right up to the top. Promise of who they will be and fear of what your alternative is. That puts you at 16. And I actually think Carson Wentz could be in a somewhat similar position because, I mean, the Eagles believe in him. He's given him some reason to believe in him. I don't know if he'd break the bank totally, but I mean, he'd be up there. I'm telling you, the next group is where you start getting into my my analogy, where you start getting into the wilderness. Andy Dalton, Alex Smith, Sam Bradford. Not until you get to there do you start going, let's explore all alternatives. Maybe let's draft Pat Mahomes. That's when you start seeing what's out there. It's Will Kane in for Ron Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Coming up next, Kevin Seifert's going to come in here, give us his thoughts on Matt Stafford. Um, we're going to get into Art Briles a little bit. When, when are you allowed? When should you be banished from your industry? How about that? When have you done something so bad in the public's mind you're no longer should be able to work in that entire industry? It's Will Kane in for Ron Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Jump on the 100flowers.com Twitter feed at Will Kane, W I L L C A I N, at Rosillo Show. Join the conversation. And all guests on the Shell Pinzol performance line, which right now will include Kevin Seifert. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Kevin, do you think you could pass a blind taste test that Steven Cerruti thinks he could between Miller Lite, Coors Light, and Bud Light? Could you tell them all apart? 100% blind taste test. A hundred percent, I could tell the difference. Get out of here. I, I feel confident. I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm very confident on the Coors Light one. The other two I think I could do by elimination. What's funny is everybody feels like they're, and everybody's different. There's one I can nail down. Like me, I could get Bud Light out of the three. You well, think, yeah, there you go. Then you got a 50-50 shot after that. You, <laughs> yeah, that's not knowing. That's guessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's keep the questions going, though. Um, I'm going to ask you a couple hypotheticals, please, and you tell me if this would happen. If okay. If Cam Newton were on the market right now, free agent, would he be, or you know, somebody wanted to offer him a, a contract extension, the, the Carolina Panthers, would he be the highest paid quarterback in the NFL? If he were on the open market with no compensation due to the Panthers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are enough teams that have, I mean, look at the Jets, look at the Browns, look at really even the 49ers and a few other teams that have almost no uh, short-term or long-term future on their roster at quarterback. And so all it would take was, would be one team to feel like they need to bid uh, a tremendous amount to ensure that they got him, or a bidding war to ensue, which would be more likely. Is your and answer the you same would, if I change it to Russell Wilson? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pr- pretty much anybody, I mean, any quarterback, any established quarterback, whether it's a top 10 guy or a top, even a top 12 to 15, if one of those guys, got on the market without any compensation due. It almost never happens. Um, the best, the best, look, go look at what it happened to Ndamukong Sue when he got on the uh, open market. Uh, and he's a defensive tackle, and you wouldn't necessarily think of them as a, as a guy who breaks the bank. He set all kinds of records with his contract with the Dolphins. Uh, it's so rare that a, a, quarterback, a legitimate starting quarterback or a superstar in another position gets on the open market. Um, I think he would set, they would, they would set, big record numbers and we're going to see that most likely next year with with Kirk Cousins right yeah and that's what everybody's uh kind of hanging on and in, in, in a weird sadistic way ho- hoping and rooting that somehow he finds his way onto the market so we can actually find out what the true market value of a 
of a upper mid range starting quarterback, let alone a, a superstar, uh, might be. Well, that's and so that's fascinating. So we need to know actually what the market for a quarterback is because I sit here and we talk about Matt Stafford getting this contract to make him the highest paid player yeah. in the NFL, and I think we should stop being surprised by Kirk Cousins or Matt Stafford because, in my estimation, as I go down our list of quarterbacks, you said twelve to fifteen. For me, I got to sixteen before I'm like, yeah, you know what. Okay. I don't know if that guy would set a new record. It seems like anybody of that top half of the league, and really you're starting to include young guys as well who have little bodies of evidence or small bodies of evidence, some team would break the bank for these guys. Some team would answer the question of a scary alternative with these guys. Absolutely, and that's why you're seeing, um, you know, this came up a couple years ago when Cam Newton got uh, his big contract. That was before he won the MVP, and people were like, Cam Newton, I mean, he's been all over the place. How could you possibly pay this guy 25 25- million a year or 22 million or whatever it ends up being. Um, and it's because teams would much, much rather have the imperfect uh, uh, situation that they, they know rather than go down the road of either taking a generation or more to find uh, a guy that's just as good as Cam Newton or having to, to, to trade the franchise to move up in the draft and, uh, and, and, and get them. And so, uh, with the exception of next year's draft, actually, there's so few opportunities uh, to get a a guy that you think can be a blue chip quarterback. And for every story that you hear about, you know, fourth round this guy, uh, Kirk Cousins, sixth round Tom Brady. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of others who who were drafted in that spot and, and never had it, never sniffed a starting job. And so uh, there are. Um, there are so many teams that have made a decision and you could argue that the lions would be one of them um, who would much rather have the imperfect starter they have now than try to go down the road and find somebody better. So ESPN.com just put out a list of its top 100 players in the NFL. You participated in that. So yeah. with this conversation you and I are having, and, and I think we're on the same page, you're getting down to names like Alex Smith or Andy Dalton before you start coming up with guys who wouldn't break the bank if they were available. Why is it that um, cornerback, more cornerbacks and more wide receivers were listed in the top 100 than quarterbacks? It seems like the positional value alone would have put more guys on this list. Yeah, probably because there's just not as many. I mean, there's 32 starting quarterbacks, um, and there's if every team has two starting receivers, there's twice as much re- many receivers and twice as many cornerbacks. So it's, prob- it's probably more just a matter of numbers. I don't know that... Um, you know, I kind of looked at it with, with 12, I think it was 12 quarterbacks, uh, you know, of the 12 of the 20, 32 starters being in the top 100, I thought that was a pretty, uh, if if nothing else, kind of slanted towards the fantasy football world where we're all more familiar with the great players at position, uh, at position players than we are with offensive and defensive linemen and, and, that, and linebackers and those sort of players. But I, you know, I, I, I think that uh, – the, the state of NFL quarterbacking is probably similar to where it's been for a few years now, and that probably half to a little more than half of the teams are, are okay with the people they have starting or happy with them, and the rest wouldn't wouldn't um, wouldn't uh, think twice about if they ha- could find a better alternative. That's funny. I felt I felt the opposite, man. I saw I saw the list, and you're right. There's like 12 in the top 100, but half of those guys are ranked 70 or lower. And yeah. there's three Cowboys offensive linemen, and I love the Cowboys. I love them. There's three Cowboys offensive linemen in the yeah. top 30, but only three yeah. quarterbacks in the top 30, Brady, Reason, uh, Breeze, and Rodgers. Yeah, the Cowboys have probably the most well-known uh, offensive linemen in the history of offensive line, I think. that There's been so much publicity, and well-deserved and appropriate, of the guys that they've not only uh, brought in, but brought in with, with, uh, with high draft picks, um, and or uh, significant uh, contract extensions that have gotten them publicity. And then you look at last year and what they were able to do for a, a rookie running back and a, and a rookie quarterback and, and that the legend only grew. So I think, uh, you know, they're, they're, if you went up to an average fan and asked them to name three offensive linemen in the entire NFL, you might have a pretty good chance that at least two of them would be Cowboys. I think. <laughs> it's, uh, Cowboys, Patriots, and Seahawks led your yeah. list with seven each uh, players yeah. in the top 100. And this is the number that kind of, blew me away. I mean, we all expect this. We've heard this over and over, but the SEC, far and away, uh, the most players represented in the, uh, well, I say far and away, 25 SEC, and yeah. what is this, 22 from the Big Ten? And yeah, 21, yeah. A pretty big drop-off to the ACC and Pac-12, and huge drop-off to the Big 12. Yeah, and that, I mean, that reflects the competitive, where the competition is in, in college football, but it also reflects 
you know, whether rightly or wrongly, the the sort of group think of NFL uh, decision makers and where they're looking for players, and that they feel like the speed and the and the and the uh, and the and the skill positions, especially in the in the SEC, um, are best you know, are the best places to find on average uh, skill position players in the NFL. And I wish we had broken it down. I bet that there would that a bunch of the a big percentage of that 25 are skill position people. And then you look at the big 10 and there's the group think is that there's, you, you might have a pretty good chance of finding offensive linemen or linebackers or, or, or and in some cases, defensive backs uh, from the big 10. And so that that's kind of where the group think stands. And, and, you know, ultimately the best players, the cream rises to the top. So, you know, if, if those conferences, um, were were had players that looked good but turned out not to be they would have quickly been disseminated from the league so i think that that i mean that shows that that what in this case the group think is is for the most part accurate that's the place the most fertile ground for finding uh players that can play at a high level in the nfl all right kevin appreciate your time today Okay, well, thanks. That's Kevin Seifert on the Shell Pinzo Performance Line. The Ryan Rosillo Show is reminding that you can listen to all three hours of the show on your phone on the ESPN app. All right, so straight ahead, my favorite baseball team, the Texas Rangers, on the wrong side of a PR disaster right now, getting heat for not swapping a home series with the Houston Astros. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. How much does it stink to be Simona Holop? She... It's the number two seed in the U.S. Open. In a tournament where there is no Serena Williams. Serena Williams is out. Maternity leave. And Holop gets the second seed. And who does she get in her opening draw? Her opening draw. Second seed's supposed to be like an easy path, right? At least for a couple rounds. You got to be thinking about the money you're making, your likely appearance in the finals. Look, we're rolling here. Opening draw. Maria Sharapova. Coming off of her suspension for PEDs. Ranked 127th in the tournament, matched up against the number two seed Simona Holop and Sharapova won. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. When you're hanging out with your kids at their soccer tournament or barbecuing with your in-laws, make sure you take your ESPN app with you and stay up on everything happening in sports. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app now. I feel bad for Holop. By the way, I went to U.S. Open practice rounds this weekend. Sharapova is way taller. Than I expected. Went and saw her warm up. Saw her practicing. Really tall. Taken aback by how tall Maria Sharapova is. So the Texas Rangers, my hometown favorite baseball team, who I've lived with through some heart-wrenching World Series losses over the last mm, seven, eight years, stepped in a bit of a public relations nightmare last night. And I have to say, it's their own doing. Somewhat deservedly. The Houston Astros, as much of South Texas is, are pushed out of their homes by Hurricane Harvey right now. By the way, if you'd like to help the victims of Hurricane Harvey, please go to www.redcross.org. There are many thousands of people who could use help, who are homeless, cityless, regionless as we speak. And as an example of that, the Houston Astros have been pushed out of Minute Maid Park where they were to sched- they were to host a series, a three-game series with the Texas Rangers this coming weekend, this coming week, right now actually, starting today I think. But of course they weren't able to do so because of what's going on down in South Texas. And this led to a negotiation between the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros as to where these games should take place. The Rangers offered to host those games in Arlington. They would staff the games and send all revenues to Houston. It would be a Houston home series in terms of revenue, but of course it would be played in Arlington. The Astros, in turn, said they would like then for a scheduled September 25th through 27th series in Arlington to be moved to Houston so that they would just swap home and home series. And the Rangers didn't want to do that. The Rangers said no. We've got a couple concerns about that. We have season ticket holders towards the end of the season who have bought tickets to those games. We don't want to have it so those aren't valuable. Those aren't they can't they don't have a game to attend. They've got to figure out a way to get to Houston. The Rangers also said they're in the middle of a wild card race and they're three games out and having a twelve day road trip at the end of the season isn't something they want to do. 
And that's the thing. There are reasons. You can come up with reasons. There are reasons if you like to go, yeah, yeah, that would be hard, Rangers. That would be that would be an inconvenience. That could possibly set business back. That could hurt a wild card race. There are reasons to not do this. But those reasons are the definition of sacrifice. What sacrifice is, is taking less, giving up something value to you for a better cause. And in this case, although the Houston Astros, a multi-million dollar organization with baseball players making millions of dollars, are not good stand-ins for the people who have been pushed out of their homes in Houston, who people who are suffering in Houston, but they are a Houston-based team who currently do not have a home. And while it may inconvenience or hurt the Texas Rangers, that is what's asked of you when you're sacrificing. No one gives a sacrifice. No one. It's not a sacrifice if you say, eh, how's it work out for us? Can we at least get a wash? It's not a sacrifice for you if it's a 50-50 proposition. It's not a sacrifice if you come out better on the whole prospect in the end. A sacrifice by its very definition requires you to give up something valuable. And when you're helping out a neighbor in need, sacrifice is what's necessary. And as many pointed out, the Texas Rangers have the word Texas emblazoned across the front of their jerseys. And in this instance, it's a good time to stand for the entire state of Texas. I'm a proud Rangers fan. I'll remain a proud Rangers fan through their winning, through their losing, through these missteps. But it's a disappointing decision by John Daniels and the leadership in Texas. And it is blown back on some of the players. I saw Delano DeShields Jr. post something up on Twitter that this is bigger than baseball. It's bigger than a series. It's bigger than three games in Arlington versus three games in Tampa Bay where that game has been now moved. That series will now be played at Tropicana Field in Tampa Bay. That there are people within the Rangers organization who are helping, individuals who want to help, even the leadership of the Rangers, many of whom are not just from Dallas or Fort Worth, but who are from South Texas, have personal relationships, if not personal experiences, what's going on in South South Texas. But as an organization, it would have been nice to see the the Rangers sacrifice and step up for their friends to the South. This is A.J. Hinch. Houston Astros manager. I mean, it's somewhat irrelevant because of what's going on in Houston. We, we need, to, we need yeah. to focus on the right things. Obviously, there's a lot of emotion involved on a lot of fronts, whether it's concern for what's going on. I mean, obviously, the baseball schedule is going to continue. We would have loved to have played in Arlington and switched the series. But, you know, th- those of us as, as managers, coaches, players, like we're not involved in those discussions. We're really going to go wherever people tell us to go. But it sounds like there was a lot of debate on what to do. The right thing to do is really focus on the people back home and, and, and start the recovery when this, when this relentless storm finishes. And until then, the emotions are going to come out. That's the way the world works nowadays. Social media is going to exploit that a little bit. But we, we need to get to the baseball when we play tonight. Uh, but more importantly, just make sure people are safe. Just a reminder, again, if you want to help out the victims of Hurricane Harvey, please go to www.redcross.org. The Rangers needed to make a sacrifice for their neighbors to the south. The Rangers need to live up to the name on the front of their jerseys. Texas. And the Rangers need to sacrifice. They should have done that. I understand it's not easy, and the Houston Texans are going to face something similar to this in 11 days if things don't improve in South Texas as they have their opener against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's not so easy as just flipping it. I understand that. Flipping a series with the Jaguars to later in the season, not so easy. But sacrifice isn't easy. Speaking of social media outrage that A.J. Hinch just mentioned, I want to talk about that, the value and the driver that social media is in our business. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Russillo on ESPN Radio. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Believe it or not, the biggest hot sports debate that we've had... Inside these show production meetings over the last 24 hours wasn't Miller Lite, Coors Light, Bud Light. The biggest sports debate, and I use sports in quotation marks, we had was movie star, rock star, professional athlete. Genie comes along, grants your wishes. Which one do you go? Which way do you go? Thanks, Smallman. You went rock star? You said something about being yeah. on stage in front Musician. of thousands singing? Mm-hmm. An easy pick for me. 
Same for you, Trudy. This is a tough question because it depends on the sport. But I think I'd go movie star. I think. I think. I think athlete might be last. I think it has to be last, right? I mean, we're doing a sports program. We all love sports, but we also recognize the fleeting nature of that career, right? How short it is. It's a movie star, right? It's Brad Pitt versus Bono. Is that what it is? Would you rather be Brad Pitt or Bono? Or Tom Brady. Or Tom Brady. Gosh, Tom Brady's such an outlier, though. When you make it Tom Brady, that changes Aaron Rodgers. Okay, if it's Aaron Rodgers, yeah. You go Brad Pitt. Hmm. Give me some, that one's some thought. All right, but now hopping on the Shell Pinzo performance line is College Game Day's own Maria Taylor. Maria, which way do you go? Professional athlete, movie star, rock star? Totally going Brad Pitt. It's got to be. You're, you go the movie star. It's difficult to learn all those lines, but I mean, do you do like one, one two movies a year? Yes. Versus having to appear on a it. stage every weekend. I mean, I don't know how many times exactly. Bono does it. But. Losing your voice, screaming and running around, like, nah. <laughs> I'm going to learn my lines and be a, a movie star. <laughs> There's no doubt that's an easier life than the rock star life. No doubt. <laughs> Plus, you have to do so much drinking and drugs as the rock star just to maintain image. That's going to wear you down alone right there. Exactly. So you can be a movie. You just got to be a movie star. You can have, like... Your your little cameos, you can be on a show here and there. Go be on Jimmy Kimmel on your off days. That's a great off day. Uh, speaking of going somewhere, you're going to be in Atlanta this weekend, right? College game day in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, Alabama, Florida I State. Am. And Atlanta's home for me, so I'm actually like 20 minutes away from the stadium as we speak right now. <laughs> so I guess I'll drive down there and hang out for the whole night. So what's going to yeah, happen? I'm excited. Florida State and Alabama, greatest opener of all time. Greatest opener of all time? Yeah, the GOAT. What's going to happen? You know, I'm not picking any sides, but here's what I know for a fact will happen. Um, it's going to be a good matchup. We're going to see some of like the best players in college football going against each other. I don't know if you guys know a name, Derwin James for Florida State, but he's kind of like the do-everything defender listed as a safety, could play linebacker, could be a pseudo-DN, but we haven't seen him since 2015 in an entire season because he's been injured. Um, but he's one of those guys where I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up in New York at the end of the season. We can finally have a guy on the defensive side of the ball being considered for a Heisman again, which would be kind of cool. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him play again. Of course, we're all looking forward to see quarterbacks that had their first year as full-time starters going after each other in the very first game of the season. DeAndre Francois, Jalen Hurts, what's the leap that he takes? Is he going to hit some of those intermediate and deep passes? Is the accuracy going to go up? And, what does Brian Dable's offense look like? Because we don't have Lane Kiffin to start out the season. Like everyone wants to know, is it going to be run heavy? Is he going to play to the strengths of Jalen Hurts? What is this Alabama offense going to look like under a new OC for the entire season? So I know this is you've just taken a big. Uh, this is you've been with you're an SEC girl. You were with the mm-hmm. SEC game day show. Game day show now with College Game Day, right? So Correct. you've traveled around. Are you? Is it too? Soon to ask you favorite place. You're just going to give me an SEC answer at this point, right? Favorite place to go for college game day? Yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm just going to say Athens, right? Because that's where I went to school. So (laughs) that's the only place that I know in and out. But yeah, Nation, we went to... The only place we didn't get to last year, I think, were were the Columbia. So we didn't go to South Carolina and we didn't go to Missouri. But I've been to every single SEC school. I've never done a game at Ohio State. Like, I'm really looking forward to going there. I've been to Penn State working football, and I've been to Michigan. Those are the other two that would have been high on my list if I hadn't before. But before 2014, I spent two seasons doing just ESPN college football, so we were kind of everywhere. I would love to do a game at USC, too. Okay, but take, take, take Athens out. Take your heart out of this. Now your favorite SEC school to visit for game day? Probably LSU. Go to Baton Rouge. Why? Just that environment? They're sort of the scene alone. Yeah, like, they wake up, at, I don't even know, 6 a.m. They probably get there, like, two days before. Like, the trailers are already pulled out there. you got the campers. People are already making their food, offering you up gumbo. They're so nice unless you're the opponent, you know. <laughs> They've been drinking something brown since, like, 5 a.m. the day before. So they're already wound up before the team even rolls in. I love Baton Rouge. 
I don't know if this fits with Baton Rouge, but Pizza Hut is the official pizza of ESPN College Game Day for the third year running. Every week this season on College Game Day, Pizza Hut is offering fans a chance to win free pizza for a year just for signing up for the new Hut Rewards loyalty program. Starting Saturday, September 2nd, Hut Reward members tuning in to ESPN College Game Day with Maria each week will get their shot at winning a year's supply of Pizza Hut pizza simply by signing up at game day slash pizza hut.com. Um, all right, Maria, so setting aside the game you're going to, Florida State. By the way, do you think there's going to be any other Heisman Trophy candidates on the field besides you said um, uh, you, you gave us one? Derwin James. I got yeah. Derwin James on Derwin the defensive James. side. Yes. Yeah, I think you have to put Jalen Hurts in the conversation because he's the quarterback at Alabama. And if they make it to another national championship game and he improves in any way, shape, or form, you have to consider him. He was the SEC Offensive Player of the Year. They won a chance of conference championship, and he dealt with like the leaving of his offensive coordinator as a true freshman and had to go and play in a national championship game. Like if things are going to be more stable and he makes some strides forward, if Bo Scarborough stays healthy all season, I don't see how you don't count Jalen Hurts into the conversation for Heisman Trophy. I think the statistics are that over the last 10 years, half of the teams to finish in the top four, so those that would now be in the college football playoff, have come from – outside of the top 10 in preseason rankings. Right now your top four would be Alabama, Ohio State, Florida State, and USC. If I had to ask you, or if I asked you what teams outside the top 10 you think have the best chance to end up in the top four, who would you point to? You know, I don't know where Oklahoma State is if they're outside of the top 10, but they're a team that I feel like not many people are talking about potentially making it into the top four, but I also feel like this is the year that everyone was pointing to that could be the one, and you get Mason Rudolph back, and he's leading like a prolific offensive attack, his wide receiver James Washington. He was averaging like 20 yards per catch last season, and then on top of that, um, you feel like you have seven returning starters on offense that know exactly what's going on. They'll be clicking. I feel like they're going to put up basketball numbers. So the question is, if the offense can be, or the defense can be marginal and the offense can be exceptional consistently all season long, you play Oklahoma in Stillwater, and the only you know concern maybe this year is the Big 12 championship game where you might have a rematch against Oklahoma. If you lose that one, are you out of the college football playoff? But I feel like all those other stars have really aligned for Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State. Yeah, they're ranked 10th uh, in the AP poll, 11th in the coaches poll. Your colleague, Reese Davis, I asked him something similar, and he pointed to, I think he pointed to, to two teams that will be lining up this weekend as well, and that's Michigan and Florida. What do you expect out of that game? I expect a good one. I love, and we were talking about this earlier, both coaches are like, yeah, I'm not telling you who my quarterback is. I'm not giving you any personnel. I'm not releasing my depth chart. I don't want any competitive advantage to go uh, to my or the, my counterpart. But I feel like Michigan has the edge in this one. Um, it's nothing else than the suspensions that Florida's having to deal with to start out the season, the question marks that they do have surrounding the quarterback position. I feel like it just might be a little too much to overcome um, even though as Michigan, I feel like they have an opportunity to maybe overachieve a little bit, be the Ohio State of last season where, you know, we didn't expect as much because they're going to be young, a little inexperienced. But with a coach like Jim Harbaugh, I could see him coaching his team up to get some games that we didn't all expect them to walk away with a win with. All right, Maria, have fun in Atlanta this weekend and all season long on College Game Day. Thanks. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. You bet. So, again, you could uh, sign up for Hut Rewards at gameday.pizzahut.com. And the Rosillo show this this season, um, I heard yesterday, Red River Rivalry, right? Texas OU, this show, going to Dallas for that one. I hope I, I'm trying to get in on that, I'm trying to get on that trip. All right, straight ahead. I mentioned a little bit earlier social media outrage and how it's driving everything, including hiring decisions at every level of sports. That happened with Art Bryles in the past 24 hours. In fact, in about a 12-hour span. That's straight ahead. Will Kane in for Ryan Russillo on ESPN Radio. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay, judges... That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. When should you be banished from an industry? This is an increasing question that I have because it's an increasing issue in everything that we deal with, not just in sports, but in, in, in every industry. The tech industry, Google, 
This happened to me. It was like six, seven months ago in some other tech company. Every six months, should this person be employed in our industry? And usually, often at least, what's driving it is some kind of political opinion that doesn't align with the social media outrage or the prevailing sentiment in that industry. But sometimes it's also driven by, did you do something wrong? And such is the case with Art Bryles. Art Bryles was hired for about a 12-hour period by the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the Canadian Football League to be an offensive assistant. That hiring lasted about 12 hours until public pushback, outcry, and social media outrage instantly made the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Canadian Football League regret their outcome. Now, here's the thing about this. I'm not going to profess to be an expert on everything that happened at Baylor. I have done some reading. I do know some of what went on, and I had do intend to read the book Violated by Mark Schlebach and Paul Levine here internally at ESPN. And it seems to me that it's fair assessment to say at the very least there was a culture of Baylor that allowed for misbehavior that included sexual assault and rape. There was a culture that overlooked, that brought in second chance type athletes, risk behavior type athletes, gave them second chances and did very little to monitor them or put in place an environment where they would honestly walk the straight and narrow during their second chance. At the worst, it appears Art Bryles might have interfered with investigations, covered up, tried to downplay some of these instances, and there are many. But it's important to note that many of these allegations are coming forth through lawsuits, incomplete investigations that we have little information or access to. And this is not to say that somehow Art Bryles is innocent or even not complicit in what went down at Baylor. When there is that big a problem and you're the captain of the ship, you're dang right. The buck flows all the way up to you. Art Bryles was clearly part of the problem at Baylor. He wasn't all of the problem. And don't make yourself feel better by putting all of your rage and all of your target and all of your social media focus on Art Bryles. Cultures are created by many people. Structures, institutions, time. That contributes to cultures. But here's my question for you. Does this all add up to the fact, to the equal sign, therefore Art Bryles shall never work in football again? Number one, I have a problem with the Hamilton Tiger Cats not operating their business decisions by the courage of their convictions and their own principles, but rather by the social media outrage. If they did research on Art Bryles, if they talked to a dozen individuals like their ownership group suggested they did, if they went through the process of analyzing Art Bryles and arrived at the place where they decided this is a guy we can hire, why does that change in 12 hours? Why should that change depending upon how many people tweet or talk or come down upon you? Have a backbone. If you made a decision and you think it's right, be prepared to defend it. Don't let the polling place, the weather vane, social media guide you through your decisions because I promise you it will lead you into some cul-de-sacs. I promise you it'll lead you into some alleys you don't want to be in. Trust your own light. And if you know what you're doing and you have right reasons to make your own hires, explain them. Now, maybe you can't. Maybe you don't have principles. Maybe you don't have reasons. But then that's the sec- Then there comes the second question. Set aside for a minute whether or not the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Canadian Football League should have just followed their own backbone or had a backbone and made a decision and not bent at the will of social media or public outrage. Set aside that. And I'm serious, when should you no longer have the privilege of working in your industry? Sarah Spain says, coaching in football is a privilege, and one that Art Browse has now given up. I think you've lost your ability to coach because you no longer have any perspective on right and wrong and on what matters. How are you going to protect players with injury, concussion, anything else? Like it's, You've very clearly shown that you care more about winning than anything else. I think you go find a job. I don't care if it's at McDonald's. I don't care if you're a secretary. I don't care if you're building bricks, not building bricks, using bricks to build other things. That's probably what one does. I don't care, but I just think at some point you're not deserving. Yeah, but see, 
That's Sarah Spain of ESPN. But here's my problem with that analysis. I mean, technically, every job is a privilege. You know, bricklayers, bridge builders, plumbers could all be subjected to that same analysis. You did something wrong. Being a plumber is a privilege. Go find a job in another industry. I mean, why are football coaches different than any other industry where if you have some stain on your record, done something egregious, condemnable, you are no longer available to work in this industry. You no longer have that capability of working in this industry. I don't think Art Browse should be involved in college football. He dang sure shouldn't be a head coach in college football, by my own estimation. But I will walk this forward with telling you this is my own estimation. One that if I were in charge of a university, one if I were making higher decisions, would guide me. If the head man at a poisoned culture wanted to come back into that same environment, meaning college football, and run a program again, it would be not my program. In fact, even if he didn't want to run it, if he wanted to work in college football, I would say, I don't think this is the right place for you. Not, not under my hiring mechanism, not under my purview. But football altogether? I mean, I don't, you could even carry it into head coach. Maybe he should never be creating any culture, professional or amateur, college or pros. Maybe he shouldn't be in charge of hiring decisions, bringing people in, setting standards and culture. Maybe that's a decent argument, I think. Never. Head coach again. But offensive assistant in the Canadian Football League? Come on, I think... Unless you're prepared to say you're banished from an entire industry and explain to me why that industry is different than any other industry, people need to be allowed to work in the industry that they have become a professional in. I don't think we banish people out of employment because they've done something wrong. The Ryan Rosillo Show reminding you that you can watch all three hours of the show on ESPN News. 888-729-3776. It's Will Kane filling in for Ryan Rosillo. Coming up, Jeff Darlington is going to hop into the studio. I don't even know what he's going to talk about. Jeff Darlington's always got something good to come back at me with. So I'm just going to ask him, what do you got, Jeff? Could be the fact, Jeff, that I saw you order a blue moon last night. We could start there. No? He's already defending himself? Oh, it's Coors Light. Coors Light. See how smooth. That's Pace right. The Coors Light. All right, Jeff. We'll get into that. Straight ahead. Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Will Kane sitting in for Ryan Rosillo. Ryan's going to be back next Tuesday, by the way. All guests on the Shell Pinsel Performance Line. Now in studio, though, Jeff Darlington giving us a straight talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. It doesn't even have, like, NFL Insider. It just no? says Jeff Darlington. Next that's big, it? Well, I think the implied oh, is better. next that's, big thing. That's even better. No, I don't know about that. Jeff Darlington, next big thing. They're just trying to figure it out. They're like, what is this guy doing here? And I just put on his suit and got through security. I, I, I don't, I'm not even supposed to be here. Three-piece suit. Oh, thank you. Too. Well, you didn't actually say it was nice. I, just... I did read that you were the next big thing. Have you read that? No. No, there's an article Let's out move there. on. No. You don't want to talk about that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't want to know. Let's move on. I think you are the next big thing. Um, um, if you can get your beer order straight. What did you order at the tent that we were, the line that we were standing in? It was a great beer tent last night at the ESPN Company The ESPN picnic. picnic, which I didn't find out about until about two hours before it started. I found out 30 minutes. Was unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I mean, that was like nothing I've been to in terms of like an, an event, not even at the Super Bowl. Is there such an extravagantly Come on. entertaining? I mean, it was an amusement park open for our just total use. Yes. And the beer tent that we found each other at last night had a wonderful selection, I thought. I mean, this is about all a man needs. Miller Lite, Coors Light, Corona, and yeah, Blue Moon. I, I, I actually put that disclaimer about how wonderful the event was so that I could then say that that was a terrible beer selection at that tent. What do you want? What do you I just need? feel like it was all second tier options of those res- respective lagers or wheat beers or <laughs> whatnot. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm a hipster. I know like, you almost like a man beer. in a three piece suit, but, but I feel like Coors Light was the, the best option in that given moment. I think Coors Light and Miller Light are a toss up. I think Miller Lite is not a toss-up. I don't think. Is that a sponsor at all by any chance? I don't want to say. Know, you need to be careful. <laughs> Let's just move on. I think Miller Lite might be a Texas thing. I'm serious. Like, a lot of my buddies, Coors Light and Miller Lite are go-tos. Coors Light's a good, sure. like, was like a classy college beer. <laughs> that was like when you really wanted to step it up in college. Like, you were like, let's go see how smooth. So that's what you did last night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where do we take it from here? It was here? a great time, though. Great time. You want to talk about the NFL? 
Um, what are people well, asking you about today? Start. <laughs> what, what are people asking about today? Matthew Stafford, he deserves the money. Sixteen guys deserve this kind of money, right? I don't care about the the. I care about what the team needs to pay to keep the quarterback that is the best option for them. Like, I don't get the people who are being critical of the Lions for how could you pay Matt Stafford all that money? Like, have we not learned the lesson of what just what is happening currently with Kirk Cousins? And maybe that has not unfolded entirely either. We'll have to find out if Kirk Cousins proves to be a franchise quarterback elsewhere. But like. The Redskins are about to they they couldn't they didn't pay the money to keep their franchise quarterback who seems to be all but two feet out the door at the end of this season. And what's their option? What are they gonna do? Where are they gonna find their quarterback for twenty eighteen? Yeah, maybe they'll draft a guy, but that's not that easy to do. Look at the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. They picked Blake Bortles third overall, and now they're trying to figure out whether he's the starter. So I think that if you have a quarterback who is improved in efficiency, has decreased his interceptions, has started 96 straight games, uh, who had led eight come-from-behind victories last season without Calvin Johnson, you pay him. He's a leader within the organization. You make sure you keep him around. And the whole idea that he's like the richest player in the NFL – that's like being the oldest living human being. Like, it's not going to last long, okay? That's Some, right. So You know, you're going to have that title for about two days, and yeah. then somebody else is going to take it from you. In fact, tell me, I think, so in, in baseball we have the Mendoza line, right, where you have a batting average below that and you should, shouldn't be in the majors. At least that's what used to exist, the Mendoza line. I think, like, the NFL quarterback line is right around Alex Smith, Andy Dalton. You can go that deep, yeah. 15, 16 deep, before you can find a guy that you could say, you know what? We'll let him walk. Under no circumstances would that guy end up being the highest paid player in the NFL. I would have more of a problem with it with somebody. And Alex Smith is a really good player. And you could make the case for him that he fits what we're trying to do. So we're going to continue to pay him. That would be, that's a good line. That would probably be where I would draw the line in terms of like, we're not going to give him $28 million a year to be, you know, I, I know he hates this, but game manager. Like, I just think at some point you do draw the line, but Matt Stafford is not that. Like, Matt Stafford has the arm to make every throw. He's 29 years old. He still, you know, has potentially five, six, seven prime seasons in him. So I, I don't know where I rank him. Like, I haven't done that ranking in my head, but he certainly feels like a top half of the league quarterback. Definitely. Right. Definitely. By the way, you know for a fact this gets under Alex Smith's uh, skin, this game manager moniker? No, I don't know it for a fact. You said I know he hates this. He's got to hate it. I would love to come up with a list of things quarterbacks hate that they get characterized by. That's, you know? that's got to be number one. What's Jay Cutler's? Oh. <laughs> I mean, the resting, the B-face, the resting B-face, you know, the whole, I mean, that's not like a quarterback cliche. I know what you're saying. That's, that's got to be the thing that drives him nuts, but like it's it's his fault. Like, I mean, you can't look at a picture of Jay Cutler and you think, think that he gets looks happy. Eli's skin too? Because they say... Eli, what do they say about Eli? Eli, too, for sure, but Eli his brother even like makes fun of Eli face. face. Yeah. Eli and Jay kind of have that, but Eli is more of like a kind of dumb daisy look, say it, whereas say it. Jay is like, just looks like he's pissed off all the time, which is a good segue, because apparently Jay is having this great time in Miami, but still, you would never know it, because every time you see him, he just looks like, you know. Do you know the, do you know the don't care? In, what? Do you know the don't care story? That doesn't, that apparently doesn't, like, didn't happen, but... No, tell me the story. Like, he was in Chicago, it's Chicago lore. Like, he was in the men's room, and some guy, like, came up to him while he was using the facilities and was like, hey, I went to Vanderbilt, too, or something along these lines, and Jay just threw his head back and just goes, don't care! <laughs> <laughs> and, like, that's, like, the personification of Jay Cutler. I hate him. <laughs> but I don't even know that that's true, but it's, I, like, I was telling some some of some of his, his guys, like, it doesn't matter. Like, like smoking Jay Cutler, you know, that whole meme? There's, yeah, so they all being with him smoking cigarettes. Yes, yes. One of his buddies was like, he's never smoked a cigarette in his life. And I'm like, he might as well start. Right, because it fits so well. Yeah. I mean. um, but you are plugged in in Miami. How is it going for Jay? He, <laughs> he actually... According to Adam Gase, is having like, and Adam was with him in Chicago, is having like the most fun that that he's really had with football, and I could imagine that in this situation, he feels probably the pressure is off of him. He is at a point in his career where he understands and accepts the irrational criticism that he receives, irrational or not, depending on what side of the fence you fall. And I think he's ultimately just like, you know what? I just got paid $10 million to come back and play ball. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have a good time with this. And it seems to be um, that's a good sign, I think, for 
for the Dolphins because if they're getting the best of Jay Cutler, I mean, it's not that's not that bad. How was Jay Cutler going to be a better broadcaster or better NFL quarterback this year? This year? Yeah, this year. I mean, you know, have you read the reports? Mm-hmm. Then no he, rehearsals. What I mean, he was going to wing it, man. With he all due respect it. to our wonderfully uh, gifted industry, it's not that hard. I, he could walk into a booth and talk ball. He was going to be a gym. He was going to be awesome. Like I actually would have said, I thought he was going to be sneaky better than Tony Romo. As much as Romo was getting all the props as a broadcaster, I think Cutler was going to be sneaky good. Because just imagine him in the booth being like, "That was a terrible throw." Like. <laughs> Uh, and he'll he'll, he'll be able to come back to that too eventually. Like I, I I completely endorse his decision to get paid ten million dollars over the over a six month span. All right, yeah, I love. That Did we just spend the whole? Is he's that just going to wing it? Yes. I mean, I don't know if that interview was terrible or awesome. I'm not sure. I, th- I, I think it's pretty terrible. <laughs> the Ryan Russillo show is brought to you by Upside. <laughs> now say big on travel fault. and get a big. I'm reading professional stuff now. Okay. And okay. get a big gift card on every trip you buy. You'll love Upside.com. Upside.com. All right, man. Great job. Thanks. You too. Up next, over, under, properly rated, Will Kane in for Ron Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Up next, a little what? Over, under, and properly rated. Take us away, Saruti. All right, we've been talking about him for the first hour. We're going to talk about it a little more next hour. But Matt Stafford, not including the contract, just Matt Stafford as a quarterback. Underrated. Underrated. Matt Stafford is top 12 quarterback. Top 12? I think that's fair. What, what do you put the over, not the overrated or underrated, but the over-under on Matt Stafford, like where he ranks in the NFL? Probably 12, right? Yeah, around about there. He's a fringe top 10 guy. Yeah, and I think people, I mean, I think some of the reaction to the fact that he's gotten this contract in, I don't, actually, you disagree with this, don't you, Smallman? You want to run out his record against winning opponents and his playoff record. Do you think he's overrated? I think he's properly rated. Properly rated. The market dictates that guys are going to get these contracts regardless of accomplishments. That's all. I told you guys a few weeks ago, I can't remember, was it against Andrew Luck or something like that? I'm like, Andrew Luck is a little overrated. While Matt Stafford is a little underrated. And that brings them somewhere not far apart, I think, in the rankings. 9, 10, 11. All right, let's transition to you, you and Michelle's little um, endeavor last night. You had fried dough for the first time, correct? Yes. So let's do fried dough. Where is it rated to know if it's... I'm going to go this, my own. I'm buying fried dough. This is what I expect to get. And after I've eaten it, I feel... Underrated. Really good. Ten minutes later... Overrated. It did not feel good. It tasted so good going down. Everything in moderation. That's right, Srudy. What a good life lesson. Everything in moderation, including fried dough. Every once in a while, totally fine. You shouldn't make your diet around it. Next one. Roller coasters. Properly rated. Here's the thing about roller coasters, and you know this to be true. We're all too cool for roller coasters. All of us. We're all too cool for it. We sit there and we go, nah, nah, nah. I don't need to get on the roller coaster. I'm I'm good. I've done it. And then your eight-year-old says, please, please, please take me on the roller coaster. Or your coworker's like, I would really like to do a roller coaster. And you do it, and you realize you've had a smile on your face for the last ten minutes. And it was really fun. It was fun. So, properly rated. Yeah, like, do you think parents enjoy taking their kids to Disney World? I guess it depends on the age, but, like, yeah, you get to ride all these rides, and it's like a vacation for you, too. The rides are fine. The reason no parent wants to go to an amusement park is the lines. And the sticky kid who's eaten so many sticky foods throughout the day. By the way, we got it. We, 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 I don't know if I can do that on the radio. Somebody lost their kid last night. It's like keeping up with your kid in crowds. That's that's scary. That's hard. It's exhausting. It's not a vacation. It's not a relaxation. All right, next one. Event watch parties. So if you got together and watched the, the fight with a group of people or any other sporting event or anything. Overrated. Who are you? 
So overrated. I want to. I watch things by myself. I do too. My favorite way to watch sports is by myself. For for sports for sporting events that I care about, because the last thing I need is Tommy's brother Mike over there that's commenting through the entire event, giving me his hot takes and his commentary and play by play on whatever event's happening, or the story over here about what happened last night with these guys. While there's a third and ten right here, and I got to know if Dak is going to complete this pass. I don't need everything else going on from the people that are super into it to the people that are not into it at all. It distracts from actually seeing what's happening. I feel the same way about movies. I'd, I'd rather see a movie by myself. What about your girlfriend? Slash fiancé slash I can't remember her wife? <laughs> no, not there yet. But uh, she'd probably be mad for if that I'm saying this. But yeah, like there are movies that I want to see by myself. And even without her. You're more, you're more of a loner slash misanthrope than I am. Uh, I think we're about the same. I mean, you watched the Mayweather-McGregor fight by yourself, right? I did. I get that. Um, That I might have probably split with some friends because I didn't want to pay the 100 bucks. But most of the time, I think you and I, we're on the same page there. Like, there are certain things that you just kind of want to sit back and not have anyone have to deal with anyone while you're trying to enjoy something. I would have split that too, except it didn't go off until midnight, and I want people out of my house as soon as that's over. Like, time to go. Let me ask you, if the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, are you watching by yourself? That is a really good question. I will watch almost every Cowboy game by myself, or if I can get my kids interested. So there's no party if they're in the Super Bowl at the Cane House. Gosh. Right? I'm not going to the generic Super Bowl party, that's for sure. Oh, I, absolutely not. If I can invite fellow Cowboy fans over, which is hard to come by in New York City. Bubba's in. You a Cowboy fan, Bubba? I'm heading your way. Did not know that. Fellow oh, Cowboy yeah. fans who know what they're talking about, we can hang during a game. All right, next one. What about the Florida State-Alabama opener? Underrated. I don't think it can be overrated. I'm, I'm, that's, that's an awesome way to start the season. What was the big one last season? I remember Texas-Notre Dame first right off the bat last season. It was an awesome game. Florida State-Alabama to start off the college football season? Yes, I'm in. You can't overhype that. Number one versus number three. Absolutely. Absolutely. Underrated. Last year was Clemson, Auburn, Alabama, USC. Well, that one was LSU, good. Wisconsin. Alabama, USC was a dud, right? It was. I mean, on paper, it was, you know, technically what, number two versus number 19, but it was like not really that way. In the Alabama, score. Florida State's not going to be, not going to be a dud. All right. Coming up straight ahead, Matthew Stafford's got a new five year deal, making him the highest paid player in. NFL history, where do you draw the line? Because I think there's about 15 guys who could be in line to get that title. Plus, some accusations of hypocrisy on my part. How do you banish people out of industries? What about Kaepernick, Will? You made a defense of Art Browse. What about Kaepernick? Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Got some tweets coming in. Um, Srudy, I want to see where you are on this. Here's, I'm getting this. Miller Light? Coors Light? Come on, man. This is from John S. Drink some good local beer. Craft beer. Yeah, he's the local. Yeah. Those are kind of the most annoying people that only drink like specialty beers and are mad when you drink like the you know big corporation beers. But uh, um, not look. You, you and I are doing a delicate dance with each other from time to time, making assumptions about each other. I'm sorry, I had you pinned as a craft beer guy. I I am not a craft beer guy at all. You're not I don't a like craft IPAs. Beer guy. Nope. Nope. I'll drink like I'm a big Guinness guy. That's about it. I'm not a huge beer guy in general. I'll, I'll I'll take down a craft beer. I like a craft beer, but I'm not I'm not above Miller Lite. You're not Coors a snob. Lite. Yeah, exactly. That's the key to having refined taste. Not letting go of knowing what's good, even though it's not supposedly refined as well, right? Yeah, like I totally understand. Like on a hot day, you just want to drink a Coors Light or a Bud Light or one of those beers. Like that just makes sense. You don't have to drink a craft beer every day. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, you don't walk into a, a, a hole in the wall bar and ask what their finest Merlot is. I mean, that's you're not being refined. You're being a jerk. 
Sometimes I feel like that's like the analogy for a lot of sports takes. Like we're too cool for the sports debate, too cool for the sports conversation. Like, ah, can you believe they're talking about this on their sports show? We're criticizing it from our sports show. It seems very personal. It's not. It's not personal. <laughs> it seems very personal. No, I just think you're ordering Merlot at a dive a, bar. Is there a certain person you're referring to? No. Speaking of people that I want to respond to, I've gotten this a few times. So just in our previous segment, I suggested, when is the, when do we banish somebody from an industry? When do we say, hey, enough. You no longer are allowed to participate in this profession. Is it when you're convicted of a crime? Is it when you're charged with a crime, arrested, involved in something untoward, allegations? What about when you just have a point of view that doesn't mesh with what everybody else thinks is appropriate? I think it's a legit question to ask. Like, When do we say, no, 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 you're no longer allowed to participate in this entire profession? Because when it comes to Art Bryles and what's happened in, in, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats over the past 24 hours... I think that's an obvious question to ask. Now, I just spent some time saying, I don't think Art Bryles has a place as a head coach in college football. I think he's proven an inability to create, control, and set a proper culture in for young men in a college setting. And I'd go beyond head coach being any coach at the college level. And I think you can even carry that up a level and say, if you're head coach at the professional level, you have not shown an ability to set professional standards, to create a culture that we want in this building, whatever that building may be, you as the hiring mechanism. That's not what we want here. I think it's a perfectly legitimate thing to say, but as the assistant, offensive assistant in the Canadian Football League, social media outrage over a 12-hour span that reverses a decision, is that really? I mean, because if you're not going to be an offensive assistant in the Canadian Football League, where are you going to be in football? And the answer, apparently, is you're not. You're not. I just want to, I mean, I think that that's what we do now. Banished from an entire profession. Can't we say something is wrong? Can't we punish someone and also say, okay, that's far enough with the punishment? Or does it have to be a race to say, no, 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 no. We are, this is how 100% against whatever it is. Whatever social ill it is, we're so against it that this person has to be completely and utterly banished. I mean, I guess if you have a good argument, I'd love to hear it. 888-729-3776. Why? Never again in college football. Like, why can't it be reasonable enough that not head coach at college, perhaps no coach at college, not head coach in the pros, no longer the leader of an institution, but some job in football? Some job in football? I've had people coming at me on Twitter saying, Will, where have you been with Kaepernick on this? Like, haven't you taken a strong stand against Kaepernick's protest? He has no job in the NFL. He seems to have been banished in the NFL. Interesting point. However, I've objected to Kaepernick's protest, the form. I've objected to the clarity of his message that he's protesting for. But I've also said that he should have a job in the NFL. That he has the skills, the ability, and talent to be a quarterback in the NFL. That the negative business impact probably could be withstood by any team. And all that should add up to him ultimately getting a job in the NFL. I'm not hypocritical on this. I'm consistent on this. Al in Dallas, you're on the Rosilla Show with Will Kane. How you doing, Will? Good, thanks. You know, people get banished from industries based on ethics violations. CPAs, doctors, attorneys, nurses, you don't have to commit crimes, just ethical things. Yeah, those are licensed. Real estate agents. Yeah, those are all licensed professions, and you lose your license by some kind of regulatory governing board based on, as you said, ethical violations. And we could actually right. have a debate on whether or not that's right or not. I mean, I don't think the fact well, that it happens somewhere else means it should happen everywhere. This isn't a licensed profession, football coaches. But why should we set aside that? Set aside the distinction between licensed professions and, and unlicensed professions. Why should we do that in any profession? You're right that we do, but should we? Well. It doesn't matter whether we like it or whether we don't like it. That's just the way it is. I understand the way it is. I appreciate the call. But, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying maybe we should consider the way it is isn't necessarily the right way to be. Chris in D.C., you're on the Rosilla Show with Will Kane. Hey, how you doing, Will? Good, thanks. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about Art Browse. Uh I understand why he's uh, being denied for a job. 
Um, by nature, uh, women and children are inferior to men just by nature. So when you are har connected to harming a woman or a child, then uh, you're just looked at different by society. And he was uh, guilty of that, not in the court of law, but he was guilty of that. He uh, Chris, condoned it and facilitated it. And um, I think that he needs to uh, pay a little bit more of a heftier fine going forward. And if he's not in jail, then him being out of employment for extended amount of time is all right with me. Okay, but before I let you go, Chris, I just want to correct the record on a couple of things here. Did you say, first of all, he wasn't found guilty in a court of law. So was that something you said? That was something I said. Yeah, so that's not true. The other thing you said, by nature, men, women and children are inferior to men. You don't mean the way that came out, surely. No, I don't mean it uh, to be, um, you know, any malice towards women or children. What I mean is that uh, they are um, women and children to to a man of what our brows had going on on this campus. Uh, was an, she was an adult, but she was a woman at the same time, and she was a, a, an adolescent woman. She wasn't a, a grown woman, um, and he had things going on on campus that he knew about, and he just let it go under the rug. Yeah. And I did not know he was convicted in law in the court of law of anything. Not. He's not. He's not. He's not. Thanks for the call, Chris. That is not what's happened, just to be clear. Also, I don't think you meant this, Chris, and that's why I'm not going to hammer you over it. Obviously, women and children are not inferior to men. There are differences in all of us. And perhaps a view like that led us down the path where some things could be overlooked at Baylor, and they shouldn't have been because that view is incorrect. Um... Yeah, I just, we don't, banishment from a profession is a race to show how against sexual assault and rape we are. But you know, there are people, I'm sure, who are callous, or who maybe even characterize as not being against it. But that's not where the debate lies. And racing to impose the stiffest penalty to show something about ourselves, those of us speaking, it's not going to be the best guidepost in this. You can say what Art Browse did was wrong. You can condemn it. You can say you should never be in a position of leadership. You can say you should never be involved in college football again. But I think you've gone a bridge too far when you say he should never be involved in the profession of football again. The Rochelle Show is reminding you, if you're at work, you can stream all three hours of the show on ESPNRadio.com. I mean, if you have a good argument why you should never participate in that profession again, I'd love to hear it. But the thing is, I think what you're doing is, is more about you at that point than actually accomplishing something good in the world. By the way, this talk about accomplishing good in the world. Just got this note. J.J. Watt has now reached $2 million raised for those in Houston, for those in South Texas, ravaged by Hurricane Harvey. Way to go, J.J. Watt. Way to go, man. Up to $2 million, And what has he said, Smallman? His new goal is $3 million. New goal is $3 million. All right. Didn't plan on talking about our brawls that entire time. Want to talk about Matt Stafford as well because he's now the highest paid quarterback in the NFL and NFL history. In my estimation, he won't be the la he won't be the highest for very long. Won't be the last. In fact, we can line him up and knock him down. You could go 12, 15 deep. That could be challenging this record before you know it. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Russillo on ESPN Radio. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of one million dollars. What color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um, five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay, judges. That's true, Kevin. Bill and Owen, congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. We had a who's on first moment there with the last caller that he was saying, that Art Browse wasn't convicted of a crime in court. And I was like, no, he has not been convicted of a crime in court. And he's like, right, he hasn't been convicted of a crime in court. I was like, that's what I'm telling you. My bad, Chris in D.C. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Russillo on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests have appeared on the Shell Pins Old Performance Line. You can follow me on Twitter, at Will Kane, W-I-L-L-C-A-I-M. So Matt Stafford's now the highest-paid quarterback, the highest-paid player in NFL history. He's agreed to a five-year deal, making him just what I just said, just that, highest-paid player in NFL history. He started 109 games for the Lions. He's got a 51-58 and record. 
This NFL training camp report is brought to you by DraftKings. Play free one-week fantasy football at DraftKings. Just use code GRIT. Only at DraftKings.com. Man, when you lay some of this out, I mean, I see why you come up with these questions. Like, why is Matt Stafford the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL? 51-58 and career record. 5-46, and thanks to Michelle Smallman, we have this note, against winning teams. Zero playoff victories. And that leads to this. I have a problem with the fact that the man has been a quarterback in the National Football League for eight years. He's made the playoffs three times. He's only had a winning record and a winning season three times. And this organization has not won a playoff game since 1991. There is just something about me that has a problem with individuals that end up cashing in when the team never seems to. I, it's not his fault, and I get that. And I'm not, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, my Lord, you know, he doesn't deserve the money. That's not what I'm saying. But when you are the $27 million man, the largest annual salary in NFL history, damn, could you win a playoff game? Yes, but the reason that Matthew Stafford is making that money today and the reason Stephen A. Smith should have cause to pause, it's one of his favorite lines, I often hear Stephen A. say that, just gives me cause to pause. The reason that he should pause is because the debate is not between Matt Stafford and Tom Brady. It's not between Matt Stafford and Aaron Rodgers. It's not a question of, is Matt Stafford better than that bad man Aaron Rodgers, and therefore should he be making more money? The debate is between Matt Stafford and Andy Dalton. The debate is between Matt Stafford and Alex Smith. Because that's where the wilderness starts. If you neglect to give Matt Stafford the money he can command on the open market, and make no mistake, he can make that money. Because if you don't want to give it to him, the New York Jets will. If you don't want to give it to him, the Houston Texans will. Maybe Deshaun Watson's the answer to their prayers. Maybe they've got a future now. But if you don't want to give it to him, we can come up with about 10 teams who'd be happy to pay Matt Stafford what it takes to be the quarterback of their franchise. And then you, the Detroit Lions, become one of those teams hanging out in the wilderness. And in my estimation, the wilderness line, the line between civilization and wilderness, starts about 16 quarterbacks deep. So if you're one of those top 15, 16 quarterbacks, the bottom of which includes names like Marcus Mariota, Kirk Cousins, Russell Wilson, Jameis Winston, Dak Prescott, Eli Manning. If you're in that range, you'll pay to stay in civilization. And if you find yourself on the other side of that line, where the woods start, where wilderness starts, Alex Smith, Andy Dalton, on and on, then you're looking for an answer beyond the one you have. You're looking for a quarterback beyond the one you have. You might be okay with Alex Smith. You might be okay with Andy Dalton. I'm not saying those are bad players, but you wouldn't necessarily break the bank for those guys. Before you tie your entire organization to one of those guys, you'd consider, what are my alternatives? Maybe the alternatives are Deshaun Watson. Maybe the alternatives are Sam Darnold or a high draft pick next year. Maybe the alternatives are Matt Stafford. Because if somebody lets him go, there's somebody else willing to pay him. He's defining the market, according to Adam Schefter. This expands the quarterback market and makes it such that players like Drew Brees and Kirk Cousins, who are headed into the last year of their contract, are staring straight at the possibility of becoming $30 million a year kind of quarterbacks. And Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers, who are on the top of their game and don't have a long way to go in their deal, they're looking at also similar numbers. And I think the issue now is Matthew Stafford's a really good quarterback, but he's not the best quarterback in the game. And we're seeing the best quarterback in the game uh, be overshadowed by guys like Matthew Stafford here. So we saw this in the offensive line with Brandon Linder of Jacksonville, a guy that a lot of people don't even know, becomes the highest-paid center. Now you're seeing Matthew Stafford become the highest-paid quarterback. And when the highest-paid guy at that position is not the best player in the league at that position, it creates a little bit of a discrepancy. Man, we're going to see this. That's, That's the lesson in all this. Matthew Stafford's safely into civilization, by the way. He's not even on the edge of the wilderness. He's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't know what the over-under is on where Matt Stafford is. We, earlier we said it could be around 12. That's the over-under on where Matt Stafford is, but he's safely inside civilization. 
You're paying Matt Stafford. But we're going to hear this again. We're going to break the bank again. We're going to do this entire thing. Again. I don't know. Who's next? Kirk Cousins. Just heard Adam Schefter. Kirk Cousins. Lower on that pecking order than Matt Stafford, by the way. He's going to redefine what a quarterback gets paid. And after him, it'll be Jameis Winston or Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott. It won't always be the Tom Brady's and Aaron Rodgers of the world defining what a quarterback gets paid. you just got to be a team with a quarterback. How many quarterbacks do you think you'd be comfortable paying top dollar to? 888-729-3776. How deep do you go before you go, hmm? I'm going to look up my options here before I give you that. When you're hanging out with your friends or barbecuing with your in-laws, make sure to take your ESPN app with you and stay up on everything that's happening in sports. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app now. Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo, 888-729-3776. How many quarterbacks would you give top dollar to? Straight ahead. Trying to come up with the perfect metaphor, perfect analogy during the break with Saruti. I think it's something like this. You're on a desert island. Desert island? Deserted island. You're on a deserted island. But the, yet there's some animals. Whatever, just work with me here. Okay, there's 30 of you, so it's not deserted. There's 30 of you on an island, and there's not much to eat. But you kill an animal, and there's enough to feed 15 of you. How desperate would all of you be to get a piece of that food that you need so bad? You'd pay anything. You drive the price up to whatever it needs, whatever you're trading, puka shells on the island, whatever it may be. You trade anything because the food is a necessity and there's not enough to go around. It's Will Kane filling in for Brian Rosillo on ESPN Radio. That's the thing about the quarterback market. It's two, it's the confluence of two really important economic lessons. Number one, demand outstrips supply. There's not 30 good quarterbacks in the NFL. There's about 15 that you can win a Super Bowl with. About 15 that give you a plan for the future. And number two, it's a necessity. You have to have a quarterback. You cannot win over the long term, win it all without a quarterback. You put those things, two things together and you'll pay Matt Stafford whatever it takes to keep him. And the only way that will ever change is until there's more than 15, until I get something like 20, 25, 30 quarterbacks that you feel that way about, where the supply and demand start to become more in line with each other. Is it Leroy or Leroy in Indiana? You're on the Rosillo Show with Will Kane. It is Leroy, Will. What's up, man? It's Leroy, man. No, not much. Uh, I just listened to your, uh, your analogy there about uh, the 30 different people all trying to get the same food on the island. Well, you have the same situation when you pay one quarterback one-sixth of your payroll. I mean, that's one of your 53 guys. you still got 52 other mouths to feed on that same team. So unless you're hitting on every single draft pick like the Seahawks were early when they had Russell Wilson, you can't, A, keep your own talent, and then you can't replenish with the other outside people in like the free agency market. That's true. It could potentially, although many are saying today that's not going to affect the Lions negatively. They are going to be able to still pay players, still put out the rest of a roster. But that being said, fine. What if I even just granted you your premise? Do you win a Super Bowl without a quarterback like a Stafford at the very least? Do you win a Super Bowl without that, Leroy? Leroy? Uh, well, I mean, so like teams have, but it's definitely the exception to the norm. But like if you look at New England, when they started paying Brady huge bucks and they weren't drafting well, they, they went through a big drought where they just weren't as competitive as they could be. And then they kind of have this resurgence here lately where their younger draft picks or guys that they found on a budget started panning out for them. And then Brady's always been Brady. So that's just kind of the way I'm looking at it. And then Green yeah. Bay, that was the situation. They're not sitting on their draft picks and everybody else that they've been losing to have. So that's the thing. We're, we're dealing with exceptions here. You can point to a couple teams that might have won without a quarterback. I don't know. I guess in the Joe Flacco level of quarterback. And then on the other hand, it seems to be that the criticism of teams like the, the Detroit Lions – is why haven't you done something like the Cowboys did? Why didn't you find like a quarterback in the fourth round or like the Seahawks did with Russell Wilson? Why didn't you find this guy who could really compete at a high level on a rookie contract? It's like you're basically saying, why can't you get lucky? I'd rather have the quarterback and be paying him a lot and try to fill out the rest of your roster with less than ideal situations than be either A, hoping to get lucky or B, win a Super Bowl in the one of few exceptions out there 
where he's a subpar quarterback. Scott in Michigan, you're on the Rosillo Show with Will Kane. Hey, Will, how are you? Good. So you're a Lions fan. You're in Michigan. You Lions fan? Um, huge, huge Lions fan. Been a huge Lions fan my whole life. I'm 46 years old, so been through just nothing but gut wrenching. You know, we we let two of the best players in the history of the league walk away in their prime, and Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson. So, I mean, it's it's an organization that has had its troubles well before Matt Stafford, and they lie in the ownership. The one constant since 1957 has been the Ford family has owned that team. General managers have come and gone. Thousands of players have come and gone. Coaches have come and gone. There is one constant. But you hit the nail right on the head. It's a quarterback league. There are 15-ish that could take you to a Super Bowl. And how many can you name... I could probably name maybe six to eight that I'd rather have than Matt Stafford. And if the Lions got him for less than, say, a team like the Jets would have paid him if he was allowed to become a free agent and go on the open market. Can you imagine how much money they would have thrown at him? So you love this. Ask Greeny. Ask (laughs) Stugatz. Why would I ask? Are you talking about New York Jets fans? You just throwing out New yeah, York Jets? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so you don't want to be in the wilderness. You want you're ready to ride with with uh, Stafford, which is completely and utterly rational. Of course you do. Of course you do. Thanks for the call, Scott. Just a reminder: you can tweet the show through the oneerandflowers dot com Twitter feed at Rusillo Show. Nothing makes a summer birthday or anniversary more magical than oneerandflowers dot com. Right now. When you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to oneairflowers dot com slash ESPN. I mean, how how bad? To, Scott in Michigan just brought up Greeny. I heard Greeny this morning say, "If you feel like this is too much money for Matt Stafford, you've never rooted for a team like the New York Jets, the Cleveland Browns that have been without a quarterback." I mean, talk about a hopeless feeling. If you think this is too much, have you ever been on the other side of that coin? Have you ever been in the wilderness? You ever seen what it's like? I was a Dallas Cowboy fan. I had a few years with Chad Hutchison, Quincy Carter, Drew Henson. God, you tell yourself it's bleak, but you actually tell yourself other lies. You lie to yourself that there's hope. Ah, that guy, you know, Christian Hackenberg. I don't know. You see him back at Penn State? Drew Henson, heck of a baseball player. I think he could probably play some football, too. You tell yourself these pretty little lies to get you through the idea that you're actually just stuck in the wilderness. Is this Max Kellerman? Smallman, Max in New York. Is this Max Kellerman? Oh, no. It's not? Okay. I was getting ready to gear up. Thought I had debate on my hands, Max. What do you got, bud? Oh, yeah, no, I'm sure. Well, I was going to mention to you, I think there's probably only maybe nine or ten guys who I'd pay top dollar, and that'd be Tom Brady, Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Big Ben, Stafford, Carr, Newton, and probably Eli Manning. However, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. I mean, would you take someone who's won a Super Bowl or, I mean, you know, do they have to have playoff wins or would you take someone for the stats? Well, so you, your list is short. So you made Stafford and made your cut. Um, I would go further. I think you can win a Super Bowl with Phillip Rivers. Pay him whatever you have to. Um. Russell Wilson, I, I'm sorry, I didn't write down your top 10 list as we went, Max. But, I mean, I went 15, 16 deep, and I included a lot of young guys as well that if they were on the open market, I mean, Mariota, Winston, Prescott, I think even Wentz. If Wentz was on the open market right now, I think he'd make, I don't know about highest paid player in NFL history, but he would be between potential and a little bit of evidence this past year and draft position. Isn't that fascinating, Srudy? Remember when we had somebody in here just a few weeks ago, we said, hey, what would Jared Goff get on the open market right now? Meaning, if the Rams try to trade him. I think it was Lewis Riddick said yeah, we that. We asked Lewis Riddick, yep. Yeah, and Lewis Riddick's the biggest Goff fan in the world. Right? I think that's a fair statement. Yep. He said he'd probably only get like a fifth rounder, maybe a fourth rounder. Meanwhile, Carson Wentz, Riddick's not saying this, I'm saying if Carson Wentz was on the market right now, what does Carson Wentz get? Multiple ones. And and in terms of salary, gets whatever he wants. That's what he gets. I'm not saying that's rational. You know, a year's worth of evidence on both. 
That's the difference in the idea of having a quarterback you think you can move forward with that gives you a plan, that gives you simply a chance to win. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Coming up on Previously On, Jeff Darlington, new ESPN reporter extraordinaire. Next big thing. Next big thing. I read that. And I have talked about evidence. I think Jeff's good. See how good he is on beers at a picnic. Straight ahead on the Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio. It's the Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo today. All right. Quit talking amongst yourselves in the control room. Here you go, Saruti. I just got this on Twitter, which means it's a completely scientific poll, unassailable. This is 100% fact. Jeffrey says this. I did the light beer blind taste test for a project in college. First of all, where did you go to college? This was like, we mean a project. Project makes it seem like something for class as opposed to Wednesday afternoon at Swarthmore. What kind of college is Swarthmore? I don't even know. That just popped in my head. Anyway, he says he did this as a project in college with Coors, Bud, Miller, and Natty Light, a little natural light. Guess how many got it right out of 100? So it must have been from some kind of – he did 100. Yeah, it's like a pretty good polling survey there. I would say less than 10%. Less than 10%. So less than 10 nailed all four of those. Yes. You got it. You're right. <laughs> four is – I mean, four is tough. It's three out of 100. He says three out of 100 got all four of those. You think four is the game changer on that? If I take natural light out and I say, and I do say, you couldn't get this, Coors, Miller, and Bud Light, you will not get blind taste test. All three of those right. I'm fairly certain that I'd be able to know what what Coors was and what Bud Light was, and I think I would know that Miller Light tasted really different because I don't drink it a lot, so I'm pretty sure that I'd be able to do that. I'm actually like, I'd be able to say in the 90th percent wise. Can we do this on air? When do we do uh, that? Let's do some team building. Let's go. Well, let's just do it. Can we do it in here? Sure. We can do it, right, Ray? Bubba, you don't feel like HR. <laughs> you we don't... got a thumbs up from Ray. He's our boss. We can do it, Ray? All right. So I'm I'm, I'm here Thursday. We're going to line them up and knock them down on Thursday. <laughs> We're going to see who passes this blind taste test. All right. Here's Jeff Darlington, previously on. Previously on The Ryan Rosillo Show was unbelievable yeah it was unbelievable i mean that was like nothing i've been to in terms of like an an event not even at the super bowl is there such an extravagantly come on entertaining i mean it was an amusement park open for our just total use yes and the beer tent that we found each other at last night had a wonderful selection i thought i mean this is about all a man needs miller light coors light corona and yeah, blue moon i i, I actually put that disclaimer about how wonderful the event was so that I could then say that that was a terrible beer selection at that tent. What do you want? What do you I just need? feel like it was all second tier options of those res- respective lagers or wheat beers or <laughs> whatnot. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm a hipster. I know. Like you always sound like a man in a three piece suit. But... but I feel like Coors Light was the, the best option in that given moment. He was talking about ESPN company picnic last night, which was held at an amusement park and everything was, was awesome. Everything was free. Small and I rode a roller coaster. We had some fried dough. Good team building exercise. Like Bubba said, we're going to do a pe- Thursday. We got a new team building exercise with the beer blind taste test. Now, Darlington's being too rough on that. That's a great beer selection. I can I can follow you down the Blue Moon path. Cores, I'm always I'm for cores. Nowhere I can't I can't do that. I've I've also been informed that Miller. Is Miller and Coors? They're owned by the same company. Well, there's like one or two companies that own every beer now, except for your local craft beers. What is it? Uh, InBev. InBev like owns everything. Everything. Are they the ones that bought Budweiser too, Bubba? InBev. I believe so. Yeah. Gosh. I, I well, I don't know anyone in the Northeast that drinks Miller Light. Is is that like a Southern thing? The only people that I know up here that drink Miller Light are old people. Gosh. Right. I'm not even trying to be mean. I just that's like what I've noticed in my 28 years on Earth. This would be interesting to be like Miller Light equals fill in the blank, Coors Light equals fill in the blank, Bud Light equals, and then this is your this is your northeastern view of it. I'll tell you this: if you go to AT and T, Dallas Cowboys same, it's Miller Light everywhere, and the bottles have the state of Texas and you know drawn on it, and it's like 
It's like, you know, whatever, the patriotism. Budweiser does it with the American flag, right? What does Budweiser call I think it just calls itself America now. <laughs> it does, which is, hey, just good effort. It's awesome. That's not the case up here. That's what you I'm going to do. When the Will Cain show happens, we're just going to call it America. <laughs> uh, people already love you so much. But yeah, Miller Lite's got Texas uh, branding all over it. It's uh, yeah, it's popular in Texas. It's not the it's not that way up here. I think it's called this. I think it calls itself the the state beer of Texas or something like that. I mean, Shinerbach has something. And you're okay with that? Yeah, I like it. Mm. It's good. Coors Light's nice and refreshing on a hot summer day. Bud Light's got a little too much flavor for for, him, for my taste. I want something that's just on the edge of water when it's hot. And Blue Moon, by the way, if you're ordering the Blue Moon, now you're just being fancy again. Why are you being so fancy? You're just being fancy. You don't need to be fancy. We already know that you're smart, Smallman. We already know that you have culture. When you dropped that rib the other night and sauce went all over you. All over me. <laughs> blue Moon, I don't know. That no Blue Moon was saving you at that point. A, a big cultural beer. <laughs> all right. Enough beer talk. The Ryan Russell Show is reminding you, if you miss any of the show, you can subscribe to our Best Of podcast available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. I mean, enough beer talk until we do this blind taste test. We're gonna Let's just do this. Set the over-unders really quick because when we come back, we're going to do this. My prediction is, Saruti, you do not get two out of three, uh, three out of three. Bubba is the wild card. I don't know if Bubba looks like a man who might know his three beers. And he has the name that would suggest he does. Will you get all three, Bubba? I'd like to think so. I'm fairly confident, but I'm also now a little worried. I'm going to get them all wrong. I just want to drink, so let's go. Okay. One to four on Thursday. It's going to take a long time. <laughs> it's slow. Yeah, I think I need another test. Uh, let me do it again. Let me swirl it around. Swish around. It's going to be fascinating radio, too, I tell you that. <laughs> it's going to be good radio. Ray's going to be in on it. It's going to be great. Get all the bosses in here. It's going to be wonderful. Now I'm stuck. Matt Stafford for the next uh, <laughs> the next minute. Matt Stafford deserves to be the best paid quarterback in the NFL. People said if Matt, if uh, my analogy is right, that there's 30 different guys stranded on an island and there's only food for 15 of them. This is my quarterback analogy. What food is Matt Stafford? He's steak in that scenario. He's exactly what everybody needs because there's not enough to go around. You need an, It's a supply and demand issue. It's not a quality issue. At this point, it doesn't matter the difference between Matt Stafford and Tom Brady. If you got one of those 15 guys, you pay him because everybody in the 30 on that island needs what you got. How much would you pay for internet access? Necessity. You'd pay a lot. The truth, the, the honest truth is there's probably not enough providers coming in to lower your price. Thus with quarterbacks. Thus why Matt Stafford gets whatever he wants. Why Jameis will get whatever he wants. Why Kirk Cousins will get whatever he wants. We'll have the same conversation with Kirk Cousins in a few weeks. The right time with Omani Jones is next. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO. Go online to GEICO.com or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. Hey, Will Kane in for Ryan on the podcast today. Why the hate towards Matt Stafford? And Art Browse shouldn't be outlawed from working in football altogether, should he? Plus, talking beer with Jeff Darlington. The Ryan Rossillo Show Podcast. It's the Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio, presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Will Kane in for Ryan today. Who will be back with us next Tuesday. You can follow me on the one flowerscom Twitter feed, at Will Kane, W-I-L-L-C-A-I-N. It's like, I don't know, 30 seconds before the show starts, I set a volleyball, because why wouldn't you be setting a volleyball, into the lights, and just dust is raining down all over me right now. So before we get into Matthew Stafford and how he is possibly now, not possibly, definitely the highest paid quarterback in the NFL, we got to address a little in, you know intra show problem, and that is how one of our main producers, Steve, Mr. Steven Cerruti, has managed to land himself a position on the fun committee at ESPN. The fun committee, is and excused true? yourself from the company picnic outing last night, which basically Rice Mallman turned into. I mean. At least a small portion of the Rosillo Show family all going out, having a few bears, riding some roller coasters, just all, smiles all around. 
When you say small uh, portion, it was you and Michelle, correct? <laughs> there was some. Just two people. There was a few other people around. Okay. I think. Okay. Noted. Yeah. Uh, what fun did I miss? Well, we rode roller coasters. Two scary ones, to be exact. It was fun. That was a good roller coaster. They were both very good. Very scary. Here, I have a quiz. For, since, since you were too good for the show yesterday, Saruti, let me ask you a question. Michelle Smallman, Will Kane, and Jeff Darlington walk up to the beer tent at the Lake Compounds ESPN picnic. Three beers are ordered. One Coors Light, one Miller Light, and one Blue Moon. Assign the beer to the order. Well, okay, Miller Light is a big, it's a big no. Uh, man, I, I thought I liked Jeff. Okay, I'm gonna say the Blue Moon was you. I'm gonna say the Miller Light only because I don't know him as Jeff Darlington because I don't think Michelle would drink Miller Light. And what was the third one, Coors? Coors Light. But you wouldn't drink Coors Light either. You're off, and I want to know why you assigned me Blue Moon. I just feel like Blue Moon's kind of cool, and you know, I think you know, you put out the cool vibe, whether or not you are or not. I don't <laughs> That's know, the whole but. point. That's the point of the Blue Moon to put out the cool vibe, and I wouldn't do that. <laughs> so, are you Miller? I'm the Miller oh, Light all the man, way. You just man. dropped down so many points. No way, it, Miller Light. Among the mass-produced beers, do you really think you're one of these people that could line up Miller Light, Coors Light, and Bud Light and knock them down? You could say yes with 100 percent, you know, uh, 100 percent certainty. Yes. No. Yes. You couldn't. I know I could do it with Coors and Bud Light, and I know I, and I know I don't like Miller Light. So that's there's three right there. I'm going to tell you. I think I could put a Miller Light and Coors Light next to each other, blind taste test, and you couldn't guess which is which. Let's do it tomorrow. No, nope. you're back Thursday, right? Let's do it in five minutes. Okay. Go figure it out. We got to run that one through uh, PR, I think, first. <laughs> it's time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Matthew Stafford, as I said, will become the highest paid player in NFL history with the new five year deal he's agreed to with the Detroit Lions. Detroit or Detroit? What do we go? Detroit or Detroit? It's Detroit, right? Detroit. So, Detroit Lions. He will make $27 million annually. And his guarantees, according to Adam Schefter, go like this here. What is it? It is eighty-five million over three years. Ninety-two. Do I have this right? What is it? What? Eighty-two over eighty-five million over three years. Ninety-two over four. Ninety-two guaranteed. Ninety-two guaranteed. Just beat Andrew Luck, who was at eighty-seven million guaranteed. More guaranteed money than Andrew Luck, and this seems to make some people upset. This is somehow, I mean, even within our show, within the production meeting, how is Matthew Stafford the highest paid quarterback in the NFL? How does this make sense? This is, of course, Stephen A. Smith on first take, wondering aloud how this happens. I have a problem with the fact that the man has been a quarterback in the National Football League for eight years. He's made the playoffs three times. He's only had a winning record and a winning season three times. And this organization has not won a playoff game since 1991. There is just something about me that has a problem with individuals that end up cashing in when the team never seems to. I, it's not his fault. And I get that. And I'm not, I'm not sitting there saying, oh, my Lord, you know, he doesn't deserve the money. That's not what I'm saying. But when you are the $27 million man, the largest annual salary in NFL history, damn. Could you win a playoff game? He has so many good like one-liners. He has so many good fallback jar, you know, I mean there's just something about me that doesn't like it when an individual is the highest paid player when the team can't cash in. When an individual cash in, cashes in and a team can't cash in. It's a good line. But to use one of Stephen A's own lines against him cuz he often says this, it just gives me cause to pause. Cause to pause is right up there with Bevy. And Stephen A's favorite things to say. You know, this should give you cause to pause. What is your alternative to Matthew Stafford? You can point out, as Michelle Smallman did in our production meeting, no playoff victories. Not one. A record of 5-46 and 46 against teams with winning records. That's Matthew Stafford as the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. But... I don't think the accurate thing, the accurate debate, the accurate, accurate measurement on whether or not Matthew Stafford should get this cre- this contract is whether or not he's the best quarterback in the NFL or how many playoff games he's won. How does he compare against Aaron Rodgers? I think that's not the analysis you need to be going through. The analysis you need to be going through is 
Matthew Stafford versus the wilderness. What does it look like if your franchise is in the wilderness? And of course, by the wilderness, I mean do not have an answer at quarterback. Either don't have a franchise quarterback or don't have at least the prospect of a young guy who could become your franchise quarterback. And so when you measure your future against the wilderness, all of a sudden guys get very, very valuable. By most measures, Matthew Stafford is safely within, what are we going to call it, the prairie, the city, civilization. Matthew, if, if the wilderness is, we don't know what we have at quarterback. We're not sure if we can win with what we have at quarterback. The alternative is civilization. How many quarterbacks are inside of civilization? Well, you know, hey, we might have a future here. We can win with this guy. Because no matter how many num- what the numbers you come up with, I think Matthew Stafford is clearly within that line. What are you doing? You're analyzing my analogy? Civilization versus wilderness? You didn't like that one? No, I loved it. <laughs> I could see it on your face. We're going to start a new segment, by the way. We discussed it last night. Saruti's negative opinion on everything. <laughs> what today has made you upset? Wasn't my idea. I can't say the one I want to today. The thing that makes you upset today? Yeah. Why? Is it me? It's not you, Will. <laughs> it doesn't always have to be about you, Will. <laughs> it feels like it as you stare at me with that face on. Something about your face. <laughs> How many quarterbacks would you not pay top dollar to? That's the real question. 888-729-3776. Because I would suggest to you this. 16. There's at least 16 guys that if they came up in the free market right now, could get top dollar. The line of guys on the wilderness, the line between civilization and the wilderness, is probably 16 or 17 guys deep. The wilderness versus civilization line is drawn by names like Carson Wentz, Alex Smith, Andy Dalton. That's the line. That's where you start asking yourself, should we go all in on this guy? Should we give this guy everything it we, it's going to take to keep him in-house? Matthew Stafford? Man, it's not even a close call. He's safely in the Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson, Eli Manning, Cam Newton, Derek Carr. Previously highest paid quarterback in the NFL range. He's safely within that range. The guy you got to pay. Because the wilderness is so scary. The Ryan Rosillo Show. Rosillo. Look at this. I mean, one, two, three, four. I mean, there's so many names that you can say, I have to pay top dollar to this guy. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. Brady, Rogers, Ryan, Breeze, Roethlisberger, Carr. Clearly, right? You tell me you're not giving Philip Rivers top dollar? You're not afraid of the alternatives if you let Philip Rivers go? Andrew Luck, Cam Newton, Russell Wilson. Seahawks ready to say, you know what, Russell? Mm, it's too rich for our blood. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is going to get top dollar a year from now. Kirk Cousins who, look, what was Kirk? He was sixth in QBR this last year, but I mean, ESPN just put out a top 100 list of NFL players according to 53 experts on ESPN.com. That's writers, analysts, former members of the NFL. And Kirk Cousins didn't make top 100. He didn't make a top 100 player in the NFL. And he's going to get paid all the way. Why? Because the alternative is so scary. I mean, even the young guys, Dak Prescott, Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston, they come up right now. You don't think their teams will go all in right now on paying them? I'm telling you, the names that you get to before you say, nope, can't make him the highest paid player in the NFL, are names like Alex Smith. We've seen the Chiefs draft Patrick Mahomes. Okay, our future isn't tied to him. It's my point to you, Saruti, is it's 16 or 17 deep. That's how many guys can be high. Could, if the market and timing lined up, be the highest paid player in the NFL? I don't think I agree with you on like Mariota and some of those younger guys, though. I think it's too soon. Well, you, it may be too soon for you to say, oh, these are going to be one of the best players in the NFL. But think about all life is, is leverage and options. That's it. What is your option? What is your alternative? When people move on, you know, 
in, 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 it's, you think about all the guys who have a microphone in front of their face, be it ESPN or Fox News or CNN. Do you know what drives how much they get paid? No one sits there and goes, hmm, what, what do they get in ratings? What does that return in advertising dollars? I mean, they should, and to some extent they do, but what really drives the bottom line? Who's willing to pay X to get them out of here, right? And Marietta, Prescott, Winston, if those guys were free agents right now, somebody, if not their own team, is throwing big dollars at them despite the lack of body of evidence because the alternative is so bad. Having nothing is so bad and so scary. I'm not saying they are the best player in the NFL. I don't think Matthew Stafford's the best player in the NFL. But you know what I think about Matthew Stafford is he's safely in that zone of, yeah, we got to give everything to him. I mean, the New York Jets just announced that Josh McCown's going to be their starting quarterback because Christian Hackenberg turned out to be a big bag of nothing. I mean, that's not where you want to end up. And I, I think Josh McCown's great, but he's not who the great guy, love him when he come in here, but that's not, you can't build your franchise around that. You can build your franchise around Matt Stafford still. The Ryan Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We'll compare rates for you so you get the best deal, even if it's not with us. Saving you time and money, now that's progressive. Call or click today. Kenny in Indianapolis, you're on the Rosillo Show with Will Kane. Hey, I just wanted to give a quick take. I think if you think about a good comparison, it would be Jameis Winston. If Jameis Winston leaves the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because you're unwilling to sign him to the max deal, that franchise goes from upcoming to plummeting. Absolutely. I mean, but the thing is, that doesn't make Tampa unique. I don't think that makes Jameis unique. I'm telling you, half the league is in that position. Oh, I agree. I agree with you 100%. I think at least 20 people, excuse me, at least 20 quarterbacks are in that position where you need to pay them. Okay, don't out at hot least. take me, Kenny. You out hot takes me with going to 20. It's clearly not more than 16 <laughs> or 17. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm just saying, I think it's 20. All right, I appreciate the call, Kenny. Here's this. We'll, let's just work off this for a second. Mike Sando was in here about a week ago, and he uh, what did he, he talked to NFL GMs, coaches, coordinators, and ranked NFL quarterbacks into tiers. Mike Sando on ESPN.com. And here, he, I'll, I'll try to do this quickly. Here's his quarterback tiers. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, Ben Roethlisberger, Drew Brees, and Matt Ryan all in tier one. Those guys are all breaking the bank if they, get, if they come up. Andrew Luck, Derek Carr, Matt Stafford, Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson, Eli Manning, Cam Newton, and Kirk Cousins in Tier 2. Kirk Cousins at the bottom of Tier 2. And we've already heard guys like Adam Schefter saying, this is redefining the market. Guys like Kirk Cousins are going to get paid. Listen to this. This expands the quarterback market and makes it such that players like Drew Brees and Kirk Cousins, who are headed into the last year of their contract, are staring straight at the possibility of becoming $30 million a year kind of quarterbacks. And Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers, who are on the top of their game and don't have a long way to go in their deal, they're looking at also similar numbers. And I, I think the issue now is Matthew Steff is a really good quarterback, but he's not the best quarterback in the game. And we're seeing the best quarterback in the game uh, be overshadowed by guys like Matthew Stafford. So we saw this in the offensive line with Brandon Linder of Jacksonville, a guy that a lot of people don't even know becomes the highest-paid center. Now you're seeing Matthew right. Stafford become the highest-paid quarterback. And when the highest-paid guy at that position is not the best player in the league at that position, it creates a little bit of a discrepancy. There you have it. Kirk Cousins will break the bank, be in the $30 million range a year from now. Kirk Cousins is the bottom of Mike Sando's Tier 2 quarterbacks, which puts him about 13th in the league. And I would suggest to you, you can dip into Tier 3 with guys who are showing promise. Dak Prescott, Marcus Mariota, James, Jameis Winston. There's your first three. That gets you to 16. If they were on the market, fear and promise would drive their price right up to the top. Promise of who they will be and fear of what your alternative is. That puts you at 16. And I actually think Carson Wentz could be in a somewhat similar position because, I mean, the Eagles believe in him. He's given him some reason to believe in him. I don't know if he'd break the bank totally, but I mean, he'd be up there. I'm telling you, the next group is where you start getting into my, my analogy, where you start getting into the wilderness. Andy Dalton, Alex Smith, Sam Bradford. Not until you get to there do you start going, let's explore all alternatives. Maybe let's draft Pat Mahomes. That's when you start seeing what's out there. Daddy, where do babies come from? Uh. Well, uh... Honey? Mommy went to the store. Oh, well, you see, um... Well, there's a mommy and a daddy, right? Right. 
and see when they call Geico,、uh, they could save a bunch of money on car insurance. Oh, really? And that makes them happy? Yes, that makes them very happy. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we could have this talk, Sunshine. <laughs> Geico, because saving 15 percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. It's Will Kane in for Ryan Rusillo on ESPN Radio. When you're hanging out with your kids at their soccer tournament or barbecuing with your in-laws, make sure you take your ESPN app with you and stay up on everything happening in sports. It's simple, it's easy, and it keeps you connected. Take ESPN with you everywhere. Download the ESPN app now. I feel bad for Holly. By the way, I went to U.S. Open practice rounds this weekend. Sharapova is way taller than I expected. Went and saw her warm up. I saw her practicing. Really tall. Taken aback by how tall Maria Sharapova is. So the Texas Rangers, my hometown favorite baseball team, who I've lived with through some heart-wrenching World Series losses over the last、mm, seven, eight years, stepped in a bit of a public relations nightmare last night, and I have to say, it's their own doing, somewhat deservedly. The Houston Astros, as much of South Texas is, are. Pushed out of their homes by Hurricane Harvey right now. By the way, if you'd like to help the victims of Hurricane Harvey, please go to www.redcross.org. There are many thousands of people who could use help, who are homeless, cityless, regionless, as we speak. And as an example of that, the Houston Astros have been pushed out of Minute Maid Park, where they were to schedule, they were to host a series, a three-game series with the Texas Rangers. This coming weekend, this coming week, right now, actually, starting today, I think. But of course, they weren't able to do so because of what's going on down in South Texas. And this led to a negotiation between the Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros as to where these games should take place. The Rangers offered to host those games in Arlington. They would staff the games and send all revenues to Houston. It would be a Houston home series in terms of revenue, but of course, it would be played in Arlington. The Astros, in turn, said they would like. Then for a scheduled September 25th through 27th series in Arlington to be moved to Houston, so that they would just swap home and home series. And the Rangers didn't want to do that. The Rangers said, "No, we've got a couple concerns about that. We have season ticket holders towards the end of the season who have bought tickets to those games. We don't want to." Have it so those aren't valuable. Those aren't they can't they don't have a game to attend. They've got to figure out a way to get to Houston. The Rangers also said they're in the middle of a wild card race and they're three games out. And having a twelve day road trip at the end of the season isn't something they want to do. And that's the thing. There are reasons. You can come up with reasons. There are reasons if you like to go. Yeah, yeah, that would be hard, Rangers. That would be that would be an inconvenience. That could possibly set business back. That could hurt a wild card race. There are reasons to not do this. But those reasons are the definition of sacrifice. What sacrifice is is taking less, giving up something value to you for a better cause. And in this case, although the Houston Astros, a multi-million-dollar organization with baseball players making millions of dollars, are not good stand-ins for the people who have been pushed out of their homes in Houston, who people who are suffering in Houston, but they are a Houston-based team who currently do not have a home. And while it may inconvenience or hurt the Texas Rangers, that is what's asked of you when you're sacrificing. No one gives a sacrifice. No one. It's not a sacrifice if you say, "Ah,、eh, how's it work out for us?" Can we at least get a wash? It's not a sacrifice for you if it's a fifty-fifty proposition. It's not a sacrifice if you come out better on the whole prospect in the end. A sacrifice, by its very definition, requires you to give up something valuable. And when you're helping out a neighbor in need, sacrifice is what's necessary. And as Amini pointed out, the Texas Rangers have the word Texas emblazoned across the front of their jerseys. And in this instance, it's a good time to stand for the entire state of Texas. I'm a proud Rangers fan. I'll remain a proud Rangers fan through their winning, through their losing, through these missteps. But it's a disappointing decision by John Daniels and the leadership in Texas, and it is blown back. 
on some of the players. I saw Delano DeShields Jr. post something up on Twitter that this is bigger than baseball. It's bigger than a series. It's bigger than three games in Arlington versus three games in Tampa Bay where that game has been now moved. That series will now be played at Tropicana Field in Tampa Bay. That there are people within the Rangers organization who are helping, individuals who want to help, even the leadership of the Rangers, many of whom are not just from Dallas or Fort Worth, but who are from South Texas, have personal relationships, if not personal experiences, what's going on in South South Texas. But as an organization, it would have been nice to see the the Rangers sacrifice and step up for their friends to the South. This is A.J. Hinch. Houston Astros manager. I mean, it's somewhat irrelevant because of what's going on in Houston. We, we need to we need yeah. to focus on the right things. Obviously, there's a lot of emotion involved on a lot of fronts, whether it's concern for what's going on. I mean, obviously, the baseball schedule is going to continue. We would have loved to have played in Arlington and switched the series. But, you know, th- those of us as, as managers, coaches, players, like we're not involved in those discussions. We're really going to go wherever people tell us to go. But it sounds like there was a lot of debate on what to do. The right thing to do is really focus on the people back home and, and, and start the recovery when this, when this relentless storm finishes. And until then, the emotions are going to come out. That's the way the world works nowadays. Social media is going to exploit that a little bit. But we, we need to get to the baseball when we play tonight, uh, but more importantly, just make sure people are safe. Just a reminder, again, if you want to help out the victims of Hurricane Harvey, please go to www.redcross.org. The Rangers needed to make a sacrifice for their neighbors to the south. The Rangers need to live up to the name on the front of their jerseys. Texas. And the Rangers need to sacrifice. They should have done that. I understand it's not easy. And the Houston Texans are going to face something similar to this in 11 days if things don't improve in South Texas as they have their opener against the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's not so easy as just flipping it. I understand that. Flipping a series with the Jaguars to later in the season, not so easy. But sacrifice isn't easy. The Ryan Rosillo Show. Rosillo. Will Kane in for Ryan today. Hop on the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed at Will Kane. Join the conversation. The Rosillo Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive, creators of the Name Your Price tool. Choose from a range of coverage options and pick the right price that works for you. When are you... When should you be banished from an industry? This is an increasing question that I have because it's an increasing issue in everything that we deal with, not just in sports, but in, in, in every industry. The tech industry. Google. This happened to me it was like six, seven months ago in some other tech company. Every six months, should this person be employed in our industry? And usually, often at least, what's driving it is some kind of political opinion that doesn't align with the social media outrage or the prevailing sentiment in that in- industry. But sometimes it's also driven by, did you do something wrong? And such is the case with Art Bryles. Art Bryles was hired for about a 12-hour period by the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the Canadian Football League, to be an offensive assistant. That hiring lasted about 12 hours until public pushback, outcry, and social media outrage instantly made the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Canadian Football League regret their outcome. Now, here's the thing about this. I'm not going to profess to be an expert on everything that happened at Baylor. I have done some reading. I do know some of what went on, and I had do intend to read the book Violated by Mark Schlebach and Paul Levine here internally at ESPN. And it seems to me that it's a fair assessment to say at the very least there was a culture of Baylor that allowed for misbehavior that included sexual assault and rape. There was a culture that overlooked, that brought in second chance type athletes, risk behavior type athletes, gave them second chances and did very little to monitor them or put in place an environment where they would honestly walk the straight and narrow during their second chance. At the worst, it appears Art Bryles might have interfered with investigations, covered up, tried to downplay some of these instances, and there are many. But it's important to note that many of these allegations are coming forth through lawsuits incomplete investigations that we have little information or access to. And this is not to say that somehow Art Bryles is innocent or even not complicit in what went down at Baylor. When there is that big a problem and you're the captain of the ship, you're dang right. The buck flows all the way up to you. Art Bryles was clearly part of the problem at Baylor. He wasn't all of the problem. 
And don't make yourself feel better by putting all of your rage and all of your target and all of your social media focus on our Bryles. Cultures are created by many people. Structures, institutions, time. That contributes to cultures. But here's my question for you. Does this all add up to the fact, to the equal sign, therefore Art Brow shall never work in football again? Number one, I have a problem with the Hamilton Tiger Cats not operating their business decisions by the courage of their convictions and their own principles, but rather by the social media outrage. If they did research on Art Bryles, if they talked to a dozen individuals like their ownership group suggested they did, if they went through the process of analyzing Art Bryles and arrived at the place where they decided this is a guy we can hire, why does that change in 12 hours? Why should that change depending upon how many people tweet or talk or come down upon you? Have a backbone. If you made a decision and you think it's right, be prepared to defend it. Don't let the polling place, the weather vane, social media guide you through your decisions because I promise you it will lead you into some cul-de-sacs. I promise you it'll lead you into some alleys you don't want to be in. Trust your own light. And if you know what you're doing and you have right reasons to make your own hires, explain them. Now, maybe you can't. Maybe you don't have principles. Maybe you don't have reasons. But then that's the sec, then there comes this second question. Set aside for a minute whether or not the Hamilton Tiger Cats and the Canadian Football League should have just followed their own backbone or had a backbone and made a decision and not bent at the will of social media. Or public outrage. Set aside that. And I'm serious. When should you no longer have the privilege of working in your industry? Sarah Spain says coaching in football is a privilege and one that Art Browse has now given up. I think you've lost your ability to coach because you no longer have any perspective on right and wrong and on what matters. How are you going to protect players with injury, concussion, anything else? Like it's, You've very clearly shown that you care more about winning than anything else. I think you go find a job. I don't care if it's at McDonald's. I don't care if you're a secretary. I don't care if you're building bricks, not building bricks, using bricks to build other things. That's probably what one does. I don't care, but I just think at some point you're not deserving. Yeah, but see, that's Sarah Spain of ESPN, but here's my problem with that analysis. I mean, technically, every job is a privilege. You know, bricklayers, bridge builders, plumbers could all be subjected to that same analysis. You did something wrong, being a plumber is a privilege, go find a job in another industry. I mean, why are football coaches different than any other industry where if you have some stain on your record, done something egregious, condemnable, you are no longer available to work in this industry. You no longer have that capability of working in this industry. I don't think Art Browse should be involved in college football. He dang sure shouldn't be a head coach in college football, by my own estimation. But I will walk this forward with telling you this is my own estimation, one that if I were in charge of a university, one if I were making higher decisions, would guide me. If the head man at a poisoned culture wanted to come back into that same environment, meaning college football and run a program again, it would be not my program. In fact, even if he didn't want to run it, if he wanted to work in college football, I would say, I don't think this is the right place for you. Not, not under my hiring mechanism, not under my purview, but football altogether. I mean, I don't, you could even carry it into head coach. Maybe he should never be creating any culture, professional or amateur, college or pros. Maybe he shouldn't be in charge of hiring decisions, bringing people in, setting standards and culture. Maybe that's a decent argument, I think. Never head coach again. But offensive assistant in the Canadian Football League? Come on, I think unless you're prepared to say you're banished from an entire industry and explain to me why that industry is different than any other industry, People need to be allowed to work in the industry that they have become a professional in. I don't think we banish people out of employment because they've done something wrong. The Ryan Rosillo Show reminding you that you can watch all three hours of the show on ESPN News. 888-729-3776. It's Will Cain filling in for Ryan Rosillo. 
Coming up, Jeff Darlington's going to hop into the studio. I don't even know what he's going to talk about. Jeff Darlington's always got something good to come back at me with, so I'm just going to ask him. What do you got, Jeff? Could be the fact, Jeff, that I saw you order a blue moon last night. We could start there. No? He's already defending himself? Oh, it's Coors Light. Coors Light. See how smooth. That's Thanks right. The Coors Light. All right, Jeff. We'll get into that. Straight ahead. Will Kane in for Ryan Rosillo on ESPN Radio. In studio, though, Jeff Darlington giving us a straight talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. It doesn't even have, like, NFL Insider. It just no? says Jeff Darlington. Next that's big, it? Well, I think the implied oh, is better. next that's, big thing. That's even better. No, I don't know about that. Jeff Darlington, next big thing. They're just trying to figure it out. They're like, what is this guy doing here? And I just put on a suit and got through security. I, I, I don't, I'm not even supposed to be here. Three-piece suit. Oh, thank you. Too. Well, you didn't actually say it was nice. I, just... I did read that you were the next big thing. Have you read that? <laughs> no. No, there's an article Let's out move there. on. No. You don't want to talk about that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't <laughs> want to know. Let's move on. I think you are the next big thing. Um, um, if you can get your beer order straight. What did you order at the tent that we were, the line that we were standing in? It was a great beer tent last night at the ESPN picnic. The Company ESPN picnic. picnic, which I didn't find out about until about two hours before it started. I found out 30 minutes. Was unbelievable. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I mean, that was like nothing I've been to in terms of like an, an event, not even at the Super Bowl. Is there such an extravagantly Come on. entertaining? I mean, it was an amusement park open for our just total use. Yes. And the beer tent that we've found each other at last night had a wonderful selection i thought i mean this is about all a man needs miller light coors light corona and yeah, blue moon I, I i actually put that disclaimer about how wonderful the event was so that i could then say that that was a terrible beer selection at that tent what do you want what do you I just need? feel like it was all second tier options of those res- respective lagers or wheat beers or <laughs> What not? I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm a hipster. I know, like you almost like a man beer. in a three piece suit. But, but I felt like Coors Light was the the best option in that given moment. I think Coors Light and Miller Light are a toss up. I think Miller Light is not a toss up. I don't think is that a sponsor at all by any chance? I don't want to say. Uh, you need to be careful. <laughs> Let's just move. On. I think Miller Light might be a Texas thing. I mean, serious. Like a lot of my buddies, Coors Light and Miller Light are go tos. Coors Light's a good sure. like was like a classy college beer <laughs> that was like when you really wanted to step it up in college like you were like let's go see how smooth so that's what you did last night <laughs> yeah exactly where do we take it from it was here? great time though great time i'm talking about the nfl <laughs> um what are people <laughs> asking you about today start. <laughs> what, really... what are people asking about today matthew stafford he deserves the money 16 guys deserve this kind of money right i don't care about the the i care about what the team needs to pay to keep the quarterback that is the best option for them like, I don't get the people who are being critical of the Lions for how could you pay Matt Stafford all that money? Like, have we not learned the lesson of what just what is happening currently with Kirk Cousins? And maybe that has not unfolded entirely either. We'll have to find out if Kirk Cousins proves to be a franchise quarterback elsewhere. But like the Redskins are about to they, they couldn't they didn't pay the money to keep their franchise quarterback, who seems to be all but two feet out the door at the end of this season. And what's their option? What are they going to do? Where are they going to find their quarterback for 2018? Yeah, maybe they'll draft a guy, but that's not that easy to do. Look at the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. They picked Blake Bortles third overall, and now they're trying to figure out whether he's the starter. So I think that if you have a quarterback who has improved in efficiency, has decreased his interceptions, has started 96 straight games, uh, who led eight come-from-behind victories last season without Calvin Johnson— you pay him. He's a leader within the organization. You make sure you keep him around. And the whole idea that he's like the richest player in the NFL, that's like being the oldest living human being. Like, it's not going to last long, okay? That's Some, right. So You know, you're going to have that title for about two days, and yeah. then somebody else is going to take it from you. In fact, tell me, I think, so in, in baseball, we have the Mendoza line, right, where you have a batting average below that, and you should, shouldn't be in the majors. At least that's what used to exist, the Mendoza line. I think, like, the NFL quarterback line is right around... Alex Smith, Andy Dalton. You can go that deep, yeah. 15, 16 deep, before you can find a guy that you could say, you know what? We'll let him walk. Under no circumstances would that guy end up being the highest paid player in the NFL. I would have more of a problem with it with somebody. And Alex Smith is a really good player, and you could make the case for him that he fits what we're trying to do, so we're going to continue to pay him. That would be, that's a good line. That would probably be where I would draw the line in terms of like, we're not going to give him $28 million a year. To be, you know, a, I, ha- I know he hates this, but game manager. Like, I-, I just think at some point you do draw the line, but Matt Stafford is not that. Like, Matt Stafford has the arm to make every throw. He's 29 years old. He's still 
you know, has potentially five, six, seven prime seasons in him. So I, I don't know where I rank him. Like I haven't done that ranking in my head, but he certainly feels like a top half of the league quarterback. Definitely. Right. Definitely. By the way, you know for a fact this gets under Alex Smith's uh, uh, skin, this game manager moniker? No, I don't know it for a fact. You said I know he hates this. He's got to hate it. I would love to come up with a list of things quarterbacks hate that they get characterized by. That's, you know? that's got to be number one. What's Jay Cutler's? <laughs> I mean, the resting, the B-face, the resting B-face, you know, the whole... I mean, that's not like a quarterback cliche. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, <laughs> know what you're saying. That's, that's got to be the thing that drives him nuts. But like, it's it's his fault. Like, I mean, you can't look at a picture of Jay Cutler and Do you think, think that he gets looks under Eli's skin too. Because they say Eli. What do they say about Eli? Eli too, for sure. But Eli his brother even like makes fun. Face. Eli face. Yeah. Eli and Jay kind of have that. But Eli is more of like a kind of dumb Daisy look. Say it, whereas say it. Jay is like just looks like he's pissed off all the time. Which is a good segue because apparently Jay is having this great time in Miami, but still you would never know it because every time you see him, he just looks like, you know. Do you know the, do you know the don't care? What do you know the don't care story that doesn't that apparently doesn't like didn't happen? But no, tell me the story. Like he was in Chicago, it's Chicago lore. Like he was in the men's room and some guy like came up to him while he was using the facilities and was like, "Hey, I went to Vanderbilt too," or something along these lines. And Jay just threw his head back and just goes, "Don't care." <laughs> And like that's like the personification of Jay Cutler. I, think I hate him, <laughs> but I don't even know that that's true. But it's I, like I was telling some some of some of his, his guys like it doesn't matter. Like like smoking Jay Cutler, you know that whole meme. There's, yeah, so all the internet with in him smoking cigarettes. Yes, yes. One of his buddies was like, he's never smoked a cigarette in his life, and I'm like, he might as well start. Right, because it fits so well. Yeah. I mean, um, but you are plugged in in Miami. How is it going for Jay? He <laughs> he actually. According to Adam Gase, is having like, and Adam was with him in Chicago, is having like the most fun that that he's really had with football. And I could imagine that in this situation, he feels probably the pressure is off of him. He is at a point in his career where he understands and accepts the irrational criticism that he receives, irrational or not, depending on what side of the fence you fall. And I think he's ultimately just like, you know what? I just got paid $10 million to come back and play ball. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have a good time with this. And it seems to be um, that's a good sign, I think, for for the Dolphins because if they're getting the best of Jay Cutler, I mean, it's not that's not that bad. How Was Jay Cutler going to be a better broadcaster or better NFL quarterback this year? This year? Yeah, this year. I mean, you know, have you read the reports? Mm-hmm. That no he, rehearsals. What I mean, he was going to wing it, man. With he all due respect it. to our wonderfully uh, gifted industry, it's not that hard. Like he can walk into a booth and talk ball. He was going to be a gym. He was going to be awesome. Like I actually would have said, I thought he was going to be sneaky better than Tony Romo. As much as Romo was getting all the props as a broadcaster, I think Cutler was going to be sneaky good. Because just imagine him in the booth being like, "That was a terrible throw." Like. <laughs> Uh, and he'll he'll, he'll be able to come back to that too eventually. Like I, I I completely endorse his decision to get paid ten million dollars over the over a six month span. All right, yeah, I love it. Did we just spend the whole? Is He's that just going to wing it? Yes. I mean, I don't know if that interview was terrible or awesome. I'm not sure. I, th- I, I think it's pretty terrible. <laughs> the Ryan Rosillo Show. Up next, a little what? Over, under, and properly rated. Take us away, Sarudi. All right, we've been talking about him for the first hour. We're going to talk about it a little more next hour. But Matt Stafford, not including the contract, just Matt Stafford as a quarterback. Underrated. Underrated. Matt Stafford is top 12 quarterback. Top 12? I think that's fair. What do you put the over, not the overrated or underrated, but the over under on Matt Stafford, like where he ranks in the NFL? Probably 12, right? Yeah, around about there. He's a fringe top 10 guy. Yeah, and I think people, I mean, I think some of the reaction to the fact that he's gotten this contract in, I don't, actually, you disagree with this, don't you, Smallman? You want to run out his record against winning opponents and his playoff record. So you think he's overrated? I think he's properly rated. Properly rated. The market dictates that guys are going to get these contracts regardless of accomplishments. That's all. I told you guys a few weeks ago, I can't remember, was it against Andrew Luck or something like that? I'm like, Andrew Luck is a little overrated. While 
Matt Stafford is a little underrated. And that brings them somewhere not far apart, I think, in the rankings. 9, 10, 11. All right, let's transition to you, you and Michelle's little um, endeavor last night. You had fried dough for the first time, correct? Yes. So let's do fried dough. Hmm, where is it rated to know if it's... I'm going to go with this. My own. I'm buying fried dough. This is what I expect to get. And after I've eaten it, I feel... Underrated. Really good. Ten minutes later... Overrated. It did not feel good. It tasted so good going down. Everything in moderation. That's right, Srudy. What a good life lesson. Everything in moderation, including fried dough. Every once in a while, totally fine. You shouldn't make your diet around it. Next one. Roller coasters. Properly rated. Here's the thing about roller coasters, and you know this to be true. We're all too cool for roller coasters. All of us. We're all too cool for it. We sit there and we go, nah, nah, nah. I don't need to get on the roller coaster. I'm, I'm good. I've done it. And then your eight-year-old says, please, please, please take me on the roller coaster. Or your coworker's like, I would really like to do that roller coaster. And you do it and you realize you've had a smile on your face for the last 10 minutes. And it was really fun. It was fun. So. Properly rated. Yeah, like, do you think parents enjoy taking their kids to Disney World? I guess it depends on the age. But, like, yeah, you get to ride all these rides and it's like a vacation for you, too. The rides are fine. The reason no parent wants to go to an amusement park is the lines and the sticky kid who's eaten so many sticky foods throughout the day. By the way, we got it. We, 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 uh, I don't know if I do that on the radio. Somebody, somebody lost their kid last night. It's like keeping up with your kid in crowds. That's, that's scary. That's hard. It's exhausting. It's not a vacation. It's not a relaxation. All right, next one, event watch parties. So if you got together and watched the, the fight with a group of people or any other sporting event or anything. Overrated. For you. So overrated. I, wanna, I watch things by myself. I do too. My favorite way to watch sports is by myself. For, for sports, for sporting events that I care about. Because the last thing I need is... Tommy's brother, Mike, over there that's commenting through the entire event, giving me his hot takes and his commentary and play-by-play on whatever event's happening. Or the story over here about what happened last night with these guys while there's a third and ten right here. And I got to know if Dak is going to complete this pass. I don't need everything else going on from the people that are super into it to the people that are not into it at all. It distracts from actually seeing what's happening. I feel the same way about movies. I'd, I'd rather see a movie by myself. What about your girlfriend? Slash fiance slash I can't remember her wife? <laughs> no, not there yet. But uh, she'd probably be mad for if that I'm saying this. But yeah, like there are movies that I want to see by myself. Even without her. You're more, you're more of a loner slash misanthrope than I am. Uh, I think we're about the same. I mean, you watched the Mayweather-McGregor fight by yourself, right? I did. I get that. Um, that I might have probably split with some friends because I don't want to pay the hundred bucks. But most of the time, I think you and I, we're on the same page there. Like there are certain things that you just kind of want to sit back and not have anyone have to deal with anyone while you're trying to enjoy something. I would have split that too, except it didn't go off until midnight, and I want people out of my house as soon as that's over. Like time to go. Let me ask you: if the Cowboys are in the Super Bowl, are you watching by yourself? That is a really good question. I will watch almost every Cowboy game by myself. Or if I can get my kids interested. So there's no party if they're in the Super Bowl at the Kane House. Gosh. Right? I'm not going to the generic Super Bowl party. That's for sure. Oh, I, absolutely not. If I can invite fellow Cowboy fans over, which is hard to come by in New York City. Bubba's in. You a Cowboy fan, Bubba? I'm heading your way. Did not know that. Fellow oh, Cowboy yeah. fans who know what they're talking about, we can hang during a game. All right, next one. What about the Florida State-Alabama opener? Underrated. I don't think it can be overrated. I'm, I'm, that's, that's an awesome way to start the season. What was the big one last season? I remember Texas Notre Dame first, right off the bat last season. It was an awesome game. Florida State, Alabama to start off the college football season. 
Yes, I'm in. You can't overhype that. Number one versus number three. Absolutely. Absolutely. Underrated. Last year was Clemson, Auburn, Alabama, USC. Well, that one was LSU, good. Wisconsin. Alabama, USC was a dud, right? It was. I mean, on paper, it was, you know, technically what, number two versus number 19, but it was like not really that way. In the Alabama, score. Florida State's not going to be, not going to be a dud. Thank you for listening to the Ryan Rossillo Show podcast. You can check out the show live weekdays at 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, and on ESPN News. The Ryan Rossillo Show podcast.